I am going to use these one shots as a lead in to the long term campaign. Oh. So you three are headed to the city of Riften. Oh, man. Why are you giving us the ability to shape? <laughs> Why are there consequences? <laughs> okay, Riften. So Riften is a very expansive, elaborate city that sits kind of set in a canyon. And this canyon comes to a point, kind of a curve, and that's where the city is built around. There is the lower rift and the upper rift. The lower rift is everybody that lives within the confines of the canyon itself. The upper rift are the people that live on the, um, they're not plateaus, but the cliffs up above. The upper rift is the upper echelon of the city. The lower rift is uh, middle class. They have their noble district. They have the wilds district. There's a bunch of different districts in this city. There's about 200,000 people. It's a huge city um, filled with intrigue and politics. Every corner you turn, there's uh, something to do. People are out and about. Festivities are happening right now for the new year. Happy New Year, everyone, or belated New Year. And they're having a celebration. This city is old, very old. And you were sent there, you three, to find out if this one man is going to be a good fit for the princess. hey -o. As betrothed. Oh, not that kind of fit. <laughs> <laughs> You're awful. It already begins. <laughs> Let's try out this princess to see. You must be well endowed. <laughs> We're not starting yet. More than the <laughs> elephant. If he can measure up to me. Boom. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what can he fit into? <laughs> this this crystal codpiece. <laughs> I'll let you keep going for a while. Gives me more time to prep, anyways. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, this canyon is huge. The cliff tops are a half mile high, and across is um, anywhere from four to eight miles at certain points. So, it's not just a small crevasse. It is. A sprawling city. Any questions so far? Um, what's this prince's name? He is not a prince. But let's go find his name. Marcus Aurelius. His name is Marquis de Mascara Prospero, but they call him Prospero. And Marquis he lives Mascara. in a very large keep, Castel de Mascara. Mascara. Like the eye makeup. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mascara. In the city of Rifton, Locals enjoy the life of splendor and frivolity. Lavish parties are held on every corner. Bars are filled to the brim. Uh, celebration happens throughout the year, not just for New Year's. The Marquis Prospero has a reputation for being a generous and a frivolous party thrower. Parties every week, every weekend. He is a patron of arts, and he has a lot of uh, connections to the upper echelons and to the upper rift, although he is in the lower rift itself. That's where he lives, and that's where the uh, Cast Castel de Mascara is. You three arrive in the city of Riften in a river that's channeled through the canyon, and there's actually a very large waterfall that tumbles down the cliffside of Riften. And 
you dock about a mile away from the waterfall. And the site is pretty amazing to behold, because when you look up, you're looking at the sides of the cliffs, a half mile high, palaces built atop the cliff sides, temples in every district that you pass through. The port is bustling. There are uh, sailors that are tending to the boat already. They're grabbing the rope and tying it up and uh, bringing you guys in. The sun is just about to set. I didn't have time to print these out, but you're going to be meeting a liaison while you're in the city, and her name is Kara. And Prospero has also written to the adventurers. What's your names again? Ryzen. Cleave. Cleave Appian. It says, I have received word of your impending travels to Riftum. As a thank you for your service to the realms, you are hereby invited to attend a masquerade ball at the Castel di Mascara. During your stay here, you may partake in decadent food, wine, and entertainment. Please dress in your finest attire. Decorative masks will be provided upon arrival. Present this invitation at the door to be admitted entry. I look forward to meeting you in person. Prospero, Marquis de Mascaro. Every one of you has their own invitation. Very nice. The sun sets below the cliffside, just past the palace, and you're uh, set in a very large plaza. There is a clock tower at the end of this plaza. The stones are all neatly cobbled and cleaned, and the season is warm. Um, so you can you don't need uh, warm clothes. Although I believe Appian wears a lot of heavy fears. Furs. <laughs> I do wear fear as well. Yeah. Though not of bees. I am not certain my clothing is adequate for such a festival. Perhaps we should go shopping. You have about one and a half hours before the masquerade ball. What do you want to do before then? And before we actually begin the game, I told you guys I was going to give you some items for succeeding in your last adventure. So let's go ahead and start with magic items. I love Yay. that. Yay! I want That's what decadent, I want to start with. Decadent, rich-looking clothing. <laughs> All right, give me a D hundred roll map. Gosh, darn it! Mm -hmm. uh, Ryzen, sorry. <clears throat> and a one, and a two, and a. One, two, three, four. Oh my god! That's ninety nine. Ninety nine. Oh man! If only you we had a it. camera to confirm it. <laughs> I have it right here. Oh, I look, have I have a 99, too. <laughs> I have a 99. Check it out. Oh, oh great. Yeah, I saw you. Oh, my gosh. I saw you. Look, like, <laughs> I have a 99. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know if it matters, like, the higher the roll. Let's just say that 99, the missing hand. This hand can only be equipped by a character that lost one of theirs. It'll magically graft to the creature's forearm. You can choose the color and shape and whether it has claws or not. <laughs> so if you want, you could chop your... Um, do you have hands as a loxodon? I guess I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, do you have, have hands. You, you gotta have hands, me? right? You get to the big old <laughs> elephant foot. I don't know if we have that in our inventory. <laughs> That's not in the D&D Beyond. It's not. But if you want to chop your hand off, let me know. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> hey, look at me. I didn't roll 99 after all. <laughs> Go ahead and roll, Brian. Appian. 69. Oh, nice. that's the better. <laughs> that's the better one right there. Yes. This I told you it was all about eyes wide shut. The instant beard. 
It is a lush, full auburn beard that's mounted on a piece of cloth. When you press this fake beard to your face, the cloth disappears and the beard actually becomes real. You can also take it off. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's fucking going on? Uh, I don't know, but I have a new way to talk to girls. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-seven. Wow. He got the hat of from. invisibility. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Pointy hat with a wide brim. When you say the command word, the hat turns invisible. Oh. Anything that's inside the hat also becomes invisible. Mm. Please. Leave. Give me your hat. I do not want to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've tried it out a couple times. You Excellent put it on your head. Strap. You say the command word. It turns invisible. Mm -hmm. Not you. And your head does not either. But you have managed to like pull it off your head, stash food in it, and make everything turn invisible. Yes. With my portable refrigerator. It doesn't refrigerate. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you keep an ice cube in there. <laughs> Your hat smells like rotting raisins. <laughs> what hat? Your head smells like rotting raisins. <laughs> All right. So that was the fun treasure, but I'm actually going to give you real treasure, too. I have an instant beard oh, thank club. God. Matt, give me a D100. You have earned the belt buckle I had, of I mistletoe. I threw a 99, and then you can do this. <laughs> Throw it again. Do it again. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you're right. Just do it again, Matt. Mm -hmm. Ten. No, I twenty six. Fuck my life. <laughs> no, wait, wait. This the six and zero. This is the sixty two. Sixty two. That's not bad. Um, you each will start with two hundred and fifty gold. Good job, Matt. Give me a D four roll. One for the mind, two is for the show. Those two, or is it everyone starts with two? Two for the show. Two. Uh, you all have 250 gold. <clears throat> all right. Two times I need you to roll a d100. <laughs> 71. 71. 33. 33. Uh, roll that one again. That one sucks. <laughs> I should just remove that from the list forever. 57. All right. You have a second level spell scroll and oil of slipperiness. Man, what was the shitty one? <laughs> uh, ammunition plus one. I don't even like those normally. Man. Hey, Stacy. No, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> and give me one more D100 roll. This is for all the money right here. Yeah, this is come on, man. All the money. This is the big one. 32. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you and your goddamn missing hand bullshit. You got Room the hand, fly. Get the hand of my back. life. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you just just reskin it. Quick. It's my trunk. That's, I put my trunk through my legs. <laughs> but it's like an actual uh, suitcase trunk. It's not his trunk. No, no, it's my trunk. I put my trunk between my legs and I take off. And you can fly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your ears grow. Oh, I'm fucking oh. Dumbo. Yep. <laughs> yep. You put a feather behind your ear. It's a feather they grow. Yep. Oh, my God. You have a feather of flying. It's attunement. It flies at a speed of 100. Oh. Damn, I'm about to sell you to a circus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that we got the magic items out of the way. What about these guys? Don't they get real ones? There's only one roll. You can give it away if you want. Oh, shit. Uh, do you want the broom of flying? <laughs> no. The feather of flying. <laughs> Do you want the oil of slipperiness? 
that <laughs> could come in handy. <laughs> 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 Perhaps we could give it to the um, Come in handy <laughs> Marquis de Mascara, Mascara Prospero Papello. Yeah, if if he is not a good fit, he may need <laughs> the oil of slippery. <laughs> 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 What else did we get? We got a broom of flying. <laughs> Feather of flying. Scroll of something. Second level scroll. I'll take that. Second level scroll. I can do that real quick, too. Unless you wanted the second level scroll. No. <laughs> scroll of suggestion. Right. You had the oil of slipperiness, then. Did you want the broom of flying? I'm good. Do you you want can't a even use the scroll. Hmm? Who can't? No one. Why? Because it's a scroll of suggestion. Yeah, I'll give you one that oh. you guys can use. Let's uh, try again. Illbeard gave you inspiration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you need thanks, it for next Ilbeard. week. <laughs> You'll need right, it for next guys. week. That's right. Wait nope, a minute. I have to use it by the end of the game. Oh, God damn it. I have an inspiration. <laughs> My generous. Thanks, Elbeard. You definitely did uh, spend your bacon correctly. And we're going to definitely use that when we need to. Wait, we, so, wait. Have we decided if we can buy them for ourselves? You cannot buy them for yourselves. All right. I'm going to, yeah, you yeah. want one? <laughs> <laughs> there was no quid pro quo. <laughs> You cannot buy them for each other. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to be more direct and uh, Bro. accurate with my words and how I say things. Fuck. I love it. Okay, Prayer of Healing. Can anyone cast that? Mm. Nope. That's just no. I can. <laughs> <laughs> the cleric? No. Whatever you Here are. we go. Hold person, scroll of hold person. I My third that. random generation, you can cast that. Okay. Mm. So you have a scroll of hold person. So I'm going to take out that oil of slipperiness. Because that's not me. That's his. That's yours. You can put it in your equipment. I'm, I put it in my notebook here. And I got a hold person. I don't even know what it does. Mm, I suppose I should look. <laughs> <laughs> you guys step off the boat. Onto the docks. This part of the city, everyone is um, active. They push past you. The uh, captain of the boat is already off-boarded and headed to the bar. The crew is tidying up and pulling down the sails. And this is the end of your journey with them. You will not be um, keeping their services. You'll be in Riften for at least two weeks. Mm. What are you going to do? Go. We locate the person that is to help us find places. Your the liaison. Car. Yes. Mm. The liaison. Yes. Let us find <laughs> Kara. 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 Pace. All right. Hopefully she will show us the way to a store where I can buy myself something more appropriate for the situation. He says, and when you look at him, it looks like he's been wearing these clothes for about three weeks. He still has some of the plant matter from that creature that you guys had slain. He hasn't even cleaned his clothes since then. He might trophy. have taken a bath at one point, but you can't tell if he did. It's been about three weeks ago. Yep, I definitely swam a bit. Yes. You'll need to bathe before this as well. Mm. Very well. To the bathhouse and Kara's house and the store of capes and robes. Does anyone have any skills that pertain to cities? What All of my mean? skills. So, how are you going to find anyone or anything for that matter? This is a very big city. 
I have perception. How many people are there in this city? 200,000. How many are on this block? <laughs> on this block, you see, um, walking around, probably like 40, 50 different people. A lot of people are um, working the docks right now, unloading cargo from a few different ships. I have intimidation. You have it? I do. Intimidation. You have been intimidated? No. I and can. how did you get it? <laughs> Away we go. <laughs> <laughs> Chop him. <laughs> he is a friend. I Excuse me, Doc Man. The guy is carrying a big bag of some kind of grain, you think, because you see some spilling out of the corner. What can I do for you? Mr. Green. Mm. I need to find... He throws it up on his shoulder a little further. Some where I can look fancy. You know, Taylor... A tail. Or do you just want a... A haberdashery. A bathhouse. All uh, of those things. Alright. I think there's a bathhouse in the uh, next block over, actually. Oh. It's for everyone here that we get off the boat. It's nothing fancy. Well, that sounds very fancy. Alright. Head up that way. You'll see a bunch of the sailors already going there. Ah, I see, yes. They all go there. You, perhaps I will see you there as well. You are working quite hard. He throws the sack up on his shoulder again, repositions it, and just kind of walks off. Goodbye, grain boy. All right. You head over to the bathhouse yeah. as a group? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah, we all bathe together. Yeah. You get there. <clears throat> It's a brothel slash bathhouse. They'll bathe you, they'll lay you, take about 30 minutes for both. I suppose I need a good shave. Do you do that too? They will. And we're going to speed through some of this, because this is a one shot, and you're going to have to eventually get to the story. <laughs> okay. Now, in the interest of time, rather than buying clothes, what if I just take some of theirs? You miss... In exchange for some gold, may I have your black robes and capes? <laughs> Give me a persuasion roll. That would be. Um, I is will, there a persuasion? I will. I will, mm. I will help. Yep. I will help him be persuasive since I am skilled in it. Oh, he's asking for their clothes and robes. Yes, my friend. He obviously has been on a very hard journey. Roll again. He could use your help. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> they look at you. You haven't bathed yet. Um, this is when you first get there. And they definitely will not sell you their clothes, no matter how much you <laughs> beg. If you offer them um, a really good price, they'll probably sell them to you. No. While you are in all ways servicing me, perhaps... Tell me where the nearest place to buy these things are. All right, so they'll lead you to um, a shop. It's like an old clothes shop. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want old clothes. I want new clothes. So they tell you where the finest tailor they know is. Yes. And it's in the uh, next it's John district. It's in a different one. Taylor Thomas. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yes. His heart name is Jonathan. Throb. He is a tailor. He is a heartthrob. Wow. They tell you that he uh, comes down all the time, and he is a heartthrob. Mm. Sometimes they just give him uh, free services. He must smell terrible. <laughs> so, you guys get bathed up. Go ahead and spend five gold each. And you head to the tailors. Mm, okay. And... Peek. Yeah, okay, spend gold. And now, yeah, I just want something that makes us, makes me look, well, I want it to look, you know, very expensive and nice. Do you but have it's still a high intelligence? Um, I guess we have to decide. I have a 12. Do you have history? You know, these are, it's not the easiest to navigate. 
Uh, do I have history? No. I have insight. <laughs> and religion. Uh, religion can help for more like a ceremonial kind of thing. Mm. So go ahead and give me an intelligence roll. You were invited to a masquerade ball. 17. 17. You get there. Calarmo, the tailor, um, Jonathan's brother. Mm. Jonathan is not there right now. Uh, you're less charming than your brother. <laughs> um, thank you. So, a masquerade ball, you say? Yes, indeed. I have a very fine selection. Are you looking for robes, suits, vests? Yes. Uh, Buttons, frills? Sir, robes, much, much like this that I'm currently wearing, but not made of recently deceased animals. Right. What about you? The finest clothes. I have a selection that's already made up. You if pass. I was to tailor you something from the beginning, I would not be able to do it in time for your no, ball. No, we don't. We don't. But I have a pretty have vast selection. And Here, follow me. He walks into the main room of the tailor shop, and they have all the wooden dummies already set up with a bunch oh. of clothes on them, and he uh, also has a bunch of clothes hanging in wardrobes that line the wall. Very well. And you have clothes that would fit me. Oh, you have a very large stature, but I'm sure I can find something for you. I We've believe come to the right place. I believe the most impressive thing I could adorn would be my bare chest to show the strength. That would it's not be very much like a ball, it's, though. It's more of a minotaur chest, anyway. So let's cover it up. Hmm. <clears throat> Here, try this on. Yeah, I have like <laughs> this nice pink. <laughs> A pink dress? <laughs> no, not a dress, but a pink cape. <laughs> he pulls out this bright <coughs> pink cape and he, uh... Toro! <laughs> flings yeah, it yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> Toro! <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on, on, on course soon. <laughs> By like 11 o'clock, we'll get to this ball. <laughs> he um, definitely throws a little bit of racial cape throwing into the mix. You knew what he was implying. I'm debating it. <laughs> <laughs> you should perhaps wear something red. Mm, yes. To cover the blood. Yes. And as well... We are the Order of the Rose. Yes. Mine, I pick white clothes. You can pick red if you like. Are you the white rose? Yeah. You pick white clothes that match your kind of... What kind of clothes do you wear? Um, like I said, I've got, I'm sure it's just... Uh, this is going to be a white shirt and pants, but then we'll have a long white cape over it. Okay. So, how freely do you want? Zero frills? Or frills everywhere? Can, uh, can I go with 65%, 69% frill? <laughs> <laughs> he finds you something perfect. Mm. 10 gold. I pay him 15. And for you, just give me this, and it will be fine. Are you going to be wearing your armor? <sighs> I'd like to be able to still wear my armor. I can perhaps fashion some adornments for you, a tavern. Mm -hmm. Yes, but be quick about it. We don't have much time. How much time do you have? One hour. I can have it done in 45 minutes. Ex Where is this ball? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is at uh, Marquis de la Prosperos. Prosperos. Yes. Oh, he does throw some of the best balls. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> he actually gives you a wink. He is a 
<laughs> he is a sports connoisseur. <clears throat> Come on back, and uh, you'll have plenty of time to make it. He's not very far away. He is in the next ward over. So you will find a way to make these clothes fit over combat-ready armor. Yes, I can make your uh, adornments. I can cut some of the sides. Uh, okay. They won't look like a natural fit, but they'll be plenty good for a ball. All right, perfect. I'll see you back here. He starts getting to work. You can see him like taking some of the things that you selected and just mangling them, cutting down the sides. Well, I have them spiked apart. armor, so <laughs> he's cutting to... holes in some yeah. of yours that you took measurements on. Mm -hmm. You have one hour to the ball. Okay. We do uh, not leave much time. I open up my invitation again. Is there how? Is there an address? How do I get in touch with Kara? What do I... Um, you do know that Kara is in the uh, Heavens District. It is a plateau that's not very far away from you that sticks up in the middle of the canyon. Oh. It How... doesn't go a half a mile high. How it's... far up is not very far away? Uh, like 500 feet. And it has a ramp kind of ridge that goes on the outside all the way up the plateau. And the plateau is almost a perfect circle about um, three, four thousand feet in diameter. Pretty close though? Like Pretty beginning. close to where you're at. It would take um, the rest of your journey there and back and not leave you much time for conversation. Um... Was it implied we were supposed to meet with her first? Yeah. Um, then let's go. Perhaps. She was the liaison to help you out in the city, so you don't have to meet with her, but it was implied uh, it would be good, too. What do you say? Yes. You say, okay. Perfect. <clears throat> then let's away. You see a couple guys that are um, actually pulling carts through the different cobblestone streets. And you look up on this plateau and you see um, every like few hundred feet there's another cart that's being pulled up and there's people that are actually taking these as rides up the plateau. Um, they kind of go at a pretty good jog. I'll race you. That seems, why would we do that when these carry us? Because it is faster. It is a pretty good jog uphill. Hundreds of feet. You'd probably tire yourself out if you want to I don't want to be sweaty. You could dash up all the way, but you'll um, have to roll your constitution at the end. Mm. Excuse me, mule boy. He stops. He got no one in his cart right now. Did you want to ride? To the top. Five silver. To the top. All three of us. One silver down. With all deliberate speed. And I give him a gold. Right. <laughs> Go! Come on! <laughs> yes. You all three pile into the cart. <clears throat> you are big dudes. Big. But you can actually tell that when you get in, there's no push down. There's no uh, lift up. This must be magically enchanted somehow to carry all your weight. So he's just pulling it as if he was pulling it through, like, a shallow water or something. This cart is made of the same goods as your mother. And he starts running up the sides of this plateau at a good jog. You'll have a little time for conversation. Where'd you want to go up here? To the Heavensly District. Yep. 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 Uh, do you know someone named Kara? Named Kara, you say? Yeah, she's some sort of a person we're supposed to meet. I rolled a one. Yeah. I have an inspiration. I'm going to use it. Ah, uh, thanks, Bill Beard. He was going to introduce us to the wrong character. <laughs> <laughs> In the sake of story purposes, we re-rolled that one into a better than one. Why did you even make him roll? The, the <laughs> Why did you even make him roll? Because he might not have known. All right. You might not have had time to meet her. 
Yeah, I have no idea how big this area is. But, yeah, I know who's here. It's the liaison. She is, she is the one we seek. Oh, she's in the Aurelian Temple. I can take it right there. Yeah, you, you just do it. <laughs> he keeps going. He turns back around, stopped <laughs> conversing with you. He feels the uh, tension in your voice. And he runs up and around, and he brings you to the Heavens District, and it's made of these luxurious temple buildings, uh, lots of arches and steeples. There's a clock tower at the back. There are a bunch of merchant shops that you pass by right in the beginning, and lots of colors, uh, colors of emeralds and rubies. These buildings are all painted. They're not all made out of wood. A lot of it's different kinds of stone or shake, like a siding. Takes you to the very back of the uh, temple that he takes you to, the Aurelian's temple, is a pretty large building with the largest steeple in this little section. Stained glass windows that are all fit in a square and they have different uh, depictions of different um, you would think they're probably angels because they have big, bright, white wings. Somebody's compensating for something. And they, the man leads you to the front of the temple and the steps, it's about 40 steps up, a very long, uh, shallow ascension to the temple. Now, wait here. You will have another gold. Right. You all get off your little cart, head up the steps, and there's people coming in and out of the temple. The doors have been swung wide open. It is a very beautiful day out, and the breeze is entering the temple. When you go in, you can feel the presence of um, just almost supernatural. You feel a little good inside as you take your first step past the threshold. You can tell there's just an air of cheer, happiness. If you had any burdens that you've been thinking about in the past few weeks, anything that's been pressing on your mind, you just feel a little bit better. You let go of things. If you were angry, a little lessened. Sneak some cheese from my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I use my <coughs> druid craft to create Falling cherry blossom petals around me as I walk. It is a good um, addition to the environment, to the area. And you actually look cleaned up and nice. We Except have our costumes. Up. No, you have to go back for them. God damn it. This isn't but, the ball anyway. But we are shaved and brushed and stuff. You are shaved. I remained hairy. Yes. Lots of people were coming and going in the entryway. As you walk further and further into this temple, when you get towards the back, you actually notice that there is some sort of ceremony going on. And there is a group that's gathered at the very front. And in the very front, there is um, a sarcophagus. Anyone have religion? I do. Ditto. You can go ahead and roll. You both have religion? Yeah, that's a convenient or great. Who knows? 14. Well, uh, that's a 19. Okay. So, yeah, um, you believe this is some kind of ceremonial uh, funeral service, obviously, in the <laughs> sarcophagus yep. with a 14. With the 19, you look around, you see the different candles that have been lit down the aisles. You see um, priests, but you don't see um, a lot of commoners, people that would belong at a service, people that should be here, that knew the person in life. It looks like they're having some sort of impromptu makeshift ceremony for... Maybe someone that nobody knew, or a stranger. Mm. This seems like it was thrown together very quickly. But the description of Kara, you see a woman standing at the front on the other side of the sarcophagus. 
She's got her head bowed, her skin's pretty pale, and her black hair uh, flows down past her, almost to the floor, actually, and it's in a very tightly knit braid. And she is um, in ceremonial half plate. She has a tabard on, and on the tabard you see an eye with uh, three lines. Oh, really? Like if you eyelashes, yeah, kind of almost, <laughs> but not. And the uh, that's the uh, symbol of Aurelian or the temple. You just know that. I believe this is her. I'll go up to her. Uh, okay. They're having a service. <laughs> oh, you wait. stop. Do you have wisdom? <laughs> no, I, oh, okay, I won't go up here. Well, you can. No. Okay. You'll give it a little bit. You give them a couple minutes. Yeah, not that long. If she is not complete, we will have to return later. Mm. She raises her head and she looks at you three. She appears to be complete. And you can tell that she knows who you are just by seeing you. And you would think, you three stand out, <laughs> no matter where you go. It's yeah. not hard. Okay. <laughs> oh God, the monsters are here. <laughs> she says a quick prayer and then steps out of the ceremony. Did anyone want to uh, go up further towards the ceremony or not? Mm -mm. Did you want to kind of stand in the back? Yeah, I think you would. Yeah, and if all you said is this is put together quickly, then it's, yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. She comes up, rise, and cleave, happy. And I'm very glad that you could join me. Your name me is here. Cleave. You did not know that. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am Kara. I was told you'd be coming and that you might need my services or you might need to know where to go in the city. You might want information about Pompero. I've been to a few of his balls. Yes. Well, as to your services, I think we're okay. We were just at the bathhouse. I've lived in the city my whole life, so what do you want to know? Will you also be going to this ball? I will not be attending the ball tonight. Would you like to? I have other obligations tonight. I would like to, actually. Give me an insight. I think I'm actually trained in insight. Yeah, true. Roll 20. No, I'm not trained, but... Uh, d -d 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 18. Do you want to roll? You don't have to. <laughs> no, I'm probably not paying enough. If Cleve's just eating from his invisible yeah. hat, yep. just like if there's things going on in the background, I'll leave you kind of just eating out of your invisible hat. Yep. It's just, it's a good. But Appian, natural 20, and 18 is good as well. As a group, you do succeed, and they can clue you in to what's going on. They kind of look at each other, look at you, look at her. I have need of investigation, actually. Please, come with me. She walks towards the sarcophagus, and people are now starting to part ways. It looks like the ceremony has broken off. Do you follow her? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You three follow her footsteps towards the sarcophagus, and you look down in, and you see a strange sight. A creature, half-human, half bird, maybe. Their wings are ripped, shredded, bleeding everywhere. Well, had bled everywhere. You can see all the blood stains on some of the feathers that have been left. Their chest has been, um, it looks like it's kind of covered in down instead of a skin, like a baby chick or something. And, their face is pretty mangled. Mm. What is this? This creature 
not even sure if I can call it a man, was found like this. They were flew into the middle of the ward, into the middle of the heavens district. Oh, right into landed, this glass. No, but oh. they brought him here. He was already dead when he hit the ground. He came from a ball. And she pulls a mask from behind the sarcophagus. It's a masquerade mask. It is a, a reptile's face. Mm -hmm. Different kind of uh, masquerade ball mask. I am not sure what happened. Curious. But, like I said, I do want to know. I want to investigate. And I believe this might have been from... The Marquis. If this is true, he would not be a good suitor for our princess. Perhaps you would like to accompany us and help with the investigation? I really do wish I could tonight. It's not going to be possible. Is there any word that... Give me a some terrible... check. I did. I gave you a natural 20. <laughs> that was for... Um, no <clears throat> I got a 20. Unnatural 20. But you can give me another insight. 24. Dude, how are you rolling like this? <laughs> Every and... time that you guys do a one shot, you roll so well. Just like, <laughs> gods. <laughs> if I was Temujin, nothing higher than the three. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, she is definitely hiding something. You're not sure what, but she's not talking about it. She just says she has business, and you can tell that she doesn't want to talk about it. Kara. Yes, Ryzen. We do have a vested interest in the Marquis. I do know that. And we will be happy to help you in your investigation. However, we will need to know everything. About him? I feel like he's as if you are holding back. Please. There is a time to gonna, talk about that. And I'm going to roll a persuasion. Okay, give me a roll. <clears throat> While that's going on, I'm going to take the reptile mask. Yep. So you put it back down right next to the sarcophagus. You pick it up. Mm -hmm. uh, 15. 15? Natural 20. That's fine. Fuck off. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> there is a time for that. And uh, I would like to tell you everything. But now is not the time. And the ball is starting soon. There might not even be time to go through everything. Can I take a quick look at the wounds and see what if it looks like it was a slash or claw? Or... Do you have medicine? No, but I am very used to different types of damage. <laughs> Give me a wisdom roll. <laughs> wisdom. While she's talking, you're Three. investigating the body. You lift where the wing's been torn, and you feel it go, <laughs> as you rip it up a little more. You have a little feather stuck between your fingers? What do you got? You fingers? Can, you, you got uh, fingers, right? Yeah, I got fingers. Okay. Pull the what are you just out. thinking? Did they all have hooves and I don't shit? Know. Like, <laughs> Come on, man. You're the weird group. <laughs> I'm an elf. He's the most normal one, and he's weirder than everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you doing to that corpse? I, I was looking to see what kind please, of. Please. It does please not have respect. any cheese. Please respect the deceased. Yes. And I. That actually kind of got her attention. <laughs> you cast zombie spell? <laughs> no. Uh, it has to be. Something has to die in front of you. Dead. Yeah. Okay. I Can't was like, <laughs> they were like, yes, respect the corpse. Come with me. <laughs> Kara, perhaps you would be more inclined to talk about this on the way to the tailor's shop with us. I cannot. Or how about over dinner? Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a persuasion check. I cast sharp person. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you do. No, I don't. Natural twenty. That's a natural ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which means a nine. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very gracious offer indeed. 
I am pretty busy, though. Yes. You have all these dead to bury. And I put on the lizard mask. Okay. (laughs) We will meet with you later, I suppose. Would you like to meet before we go? We're going now. To the masquerade ball. Go to the masquerade ball. We are going to the masquerade ball. We're going to the tailor tailor first. We're not going now. We certainly wouldn't make it back here in time. We're going to put our capes on. Come now. You owe the man outside a gold. Mm. I do. I bid you adieu. Any (laughs) information that you find out, I would really love to know. And we will have that talk. Yes. We will trade information for dates. (laughs) (laughs) For information. (coughs) Goodbye. I would prefer dates. <laughs> before before we walk out, I just go over to the the matted corpse, and I just kind of all of the bumbo jumbo dumbo, <laughs> and I say, <laughs> <laughs> have an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love when I just say words. <laughs> I love when you just say words, too. <laughs> That's your religious I crack, ceremony. I crack myself up. I don't care. Bo, jumbo, jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> so, you say a, a word for the dead. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and off you go down the long, mm. descending stone yeah. steps. I take the mask off, but I do have it with me. Okay, back to your cart. He is still waiting. He has everyone get in. Turns around. Uh, Oh, excuse me. Here's five for your haste. Gold? Yeah. His eyes widen. He clenches his fist. And he runs with all haste down. <laughs> we the just hill. roll. You down actually, <laughs> a couple times, pass other people. He's going so fast. He's just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your ears are flapping in the wind. <laughs> We're not going very fast. The drag is ridiculous. Did you keep the pink cape? Um. Uh, Pink cape? Sure. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, I'm just... Like, if they're giving it to me, I'm like... This is the toughest choice he's ever made. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> my, my guy doesn't like having that extra clothing. It weighs him down. <laughs> the pink cape is flying in the wind. He's not happy about it. <clears throat> and you make Sour it back to face. the tailors. He has everything fitted... Cut, ready to go. Uh, before we get out of the cart, uh, I just go to the, the guy in the cart. What do you know of a bird man that fell from the sky? I leave. <laughs> <laughs> he shakes his head. You get out of the cart. <laughs> if you don't get out of the cart, he just motions for you to... Very but well. you could probably stay there all day. You've already paid him more than a day's <laughs> wage. <laughs> Very well. And I get into it. Okay. And he leaves in silence. <laughs> You've what stunned you him to silence. Of a bird man. <laughs> <laughs> Says the elephant man and the bull man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you know of a fish man? You walk into the tailor's. He has all your clothes ready to go. And just like he said, they all fit over your armor very well. (sighs) Wonderful. Tabards for everyone. Whatever symbol you might have specified. Put the tabard over my shield. If you didn't specify a symbol, he just puts on like fancy different uh, filigree or symbols. No, we're roses. We're all decked out in roses. Roses. And Pisces symbols. Does he have a, uh, a pink tie that matches my cape? You ask, and he goes through about three different wardrobes, and he finds a pink tie that matches your cape. 
Okay. If you're gonna do it, go all the way. So I just have a cape and a tie. <laughs> That's good enough. You need another one of those ties to wear as a belt slash loincloth. I think my current loincloth is sufficient. Very well. And you all head to Castel de Marquis. Castel de Marquis. Hmm. And what do you think of today's events so far? <laughs> um, so far, I think these clothes, they smell a little wrong. Uh, and they smell fresh and linen. Yes, uh, I did appreciate the good shave. Uh, I am more though talking, I am chafing a bit. I am more talking about Kara. When you shaved, did you just pull the cloth beard magic item you had off? Uh, no, I, I shaved my actual okay. scruffy old beard. I didn't know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, full body shave. That item, you also know that it doesn't require a tune. So if you wanted to give it to anyone else, they could get a beard too. Yeah. Instant beard. Instant beard. Is that what it's called again? I think that's what it's called. Uh, some, something like that. It was instant beard cloth is what I wrote down. Sweet. I actually uh, created my uh, er, invisible hat in mm. D&D Beyond. Nice. Damn. Homebrew. You have a nice fancy suit that goes mm. over your armor in different strips and sections. You have um, a you very well-detailed like tabard that fits perfectly. And then Golden some red. different ornament clothing... Um, couple like they're not tabbers but those uh, long cloths that you throw over your mm-hmm. shoulder they're fitted to the shoulders and they want, sway as you and want. I want golden red and they're golden red thank you mm. and you have um, different kinds of robes I think you have yeah said. do we have masks like white sh- shirt yours fit and pants. the best because you don't wear heavy armor yeah have medium armor and you don't are you wearing half plate spiked medium armor because you so can't wear metal yeah so Yours do fit the best, because you're not wearing plate. How much does that cost us, by the way? Uh, Ten gold each. Nope. I gave him fifteen for mine. Because I'm nice. And I wanted my cape to be reversible. So, white on one side, and if I flip it around, it'll be green. Okay. (laughs) And it is. And the, yeah, green on the underside. And it is. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you very much, Taylor. Yes. Yes. And as we're walking out, I was more talking about how did you feel about what we found out at Kara's? Ah, She was hiding something. Obviously. She she didn't actually have any good excuse to turn me down for dinner. No. She is definitely hiding something. Yes. She probably has a man friend or a woman friend. Hmm. That would be worthy of hiding. Yes. I think she is hiding information about the Marquis. I find it unlikely that in a city of 200,000 people, the first one we meet is secretly dating the Marquis. (laughs) (laughs) Appen. I do not... I'm not talking about her love life. I believe he is. He is. He's definitely right. I am right. (laughs) I knew I was right. All right. Let us go find information out about this Marquis so we can see if he might be a good fit for our princess. Uh, Yes. Well, if he is dating this car girl, then he would not be a good fit. That is very true. Let us hope he's not. Do we have the crystal cod piece? To see if it fits. Yes. <laughs> Appian, did you forget the crystal cod piece? No, I'm wearing it. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> you uh, enter into the district where the Marquis, Castel de Marquis, is, and you can see the keep. It's not just a manor, it's a full sized keep. Um, not quite a castle. A castle would have like 
different wings and sections, mm-hmm. but it's very large, and it um, has one big dome tower at the very center of it. That uh, That's kind of its best feature of the whole block. You walk through these um, very wide cobbled streets, and there's already a line going through his uh, iron fence towards the front steps of this keep. It's pretty long line, actually. You're a little early, about 15 minutes, and you're about 40th in line. Mm. They've just started admitting people. How quickly does the line go? Maybe I can go up and see if we can get in a little early, since we are... The line starts moving as you're talking. You shuffle up a few steps. Probably don't need to cause a stare. That's not to ruffle the feathers. This building is built halfway into the the cliff face. It was an attempt. (laughs) It was very funny. This building is built halfway (laughs) into the cliff face, and it's very old... Um, beautiful architecture. Lots of sharp edges and corners. Lots of um, stonework where stones have been set on top of each other. And you go through a big arch before you even get there. And it's like a, a long cobbled walkway. And then another arch. And then another arch. And then the front entrance. The line goes all the way down. You pass a few different fountains as you're walking. And it's starting to pick up pace. They don't. The other people in line don't already have masks on, do they? They do not. You get masks at the door. Nice. Um, They are all dressed very fancy, and you see all different sorts of folks, different um, races. So there's dragonborn, there's humans, there's elves, which you think are probably half-elves. There's even gnomes and halflings. Every kind of race here, it's like a hodgepodge, a mix of culture. Every different kind of race is in line. Mm. And they're all very fancily dressed. You feel a little underdressed, honestly. They're not wearing armors. So they have full fitted clothing. I feel a little out of place. Uh, Don't we always? I dislike the town setting. Mm. Be much more comfortable. In an area where I can do anything I wish. Soon enough we'll be out of here, Cleve. We'll be back on the road to our adventures. For right now, let's be on our best behavior. That means... you get closer... We use our words, have, um, not our fist. What's your passive perceptions? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Probably not too bad, actually. 17? Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I guess me. I got a 14. How's my passive bad. perception on 13? Yeah, we're wow. good. We're, we're good to go. Classic one shot character. <laughs> good at the things that are useful. That is enough. Um, you see at the front the person that's admitting everyone. She is a black, white spotted tabaxi. And she is admitting people as they come in and handing them a mask. And she has a pretty large stack of masks on her table. And she's not selecting masks, like, of any particular. She's just giving them to people as they come in. Your perceptions are very good. And does anyone have a high intelligence to go with those perceptions? (laughs) Twelve. (laughs) Above average. No. I have a good one. Bad. So... A lot of these um, people that are walking in, or even different races like Dragonborn, they do a very good job at masking who they are, really keeping that secret. Even the Dragonborn, they'll have like large hoods, and if they wear a mask, they wear it towards the front, so it's really hard to tell they're even a Dragonborn unless you're really investigating them closely. And as they go in, you're forgetting who was who as they walk in. You're not very good at keeping track of the different faces that you've already seen going in. I believe that one was a gnome. Or a the, that's the, the person, biggest <laughs> uh, giveaways is the small people and the bigger people. The person right in front of us. The person How right in front of you is a human, red hair woman. She looks um to be some sort of nobility. 
at least. Noble human. Human. Oh, do it. Please do it. I'm going to try to time the mask if I see, like, a, a bull mask or anything in there. I'm going to wait and hover and approach at the time where I would get the bull mask. Okay. <laughs> you uh, don't see a bull mask. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a good <laughs> smile. <laughs> but... You guys are getting closer to approaching. You're coming up in the next few people, and she's still handing out masks. She talks to people, so it's not just like walking in. They give her the invitation. She says a few words. You can't hear her from this distance. Then they walk in. I'm going to say to the lady in the red hair. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening, ma'am. Yes. Have you ever been here before? I have been here before. It's been a while. Mm. It is a beautiful castell. It is very beautiful. This... Oh, it's my turn. She walks up in the line, hands her invitation to the tabaxi, the tabaxi says some soft words that are really hard to hear. Um, she's talking just to that person. But you could probably, like, if you wanted to listen in, you could hear what she says. I'm listening. So you're lifting your ear up? Yeah. <laughs> she says, My name is Whispers in the Night. Welcome to Castel de Mar Mascara. And she walks in. Um... The girl she in the red hair says Whisper in the Night? No. The, the tabaxi. Black and white tabaxi. Okay. She got the mask of the lynx. Mm. I'm assuming you were watching what mask she got. Yep. The one person you actually kept track of. The red hair? The red hair. You've noticed a lot of the different masks are um, different animals. Someone did get the bull's mask. It was oh. like, way before you even got that. Damn, we would take it from <laughs> You could maybe propose a trade someday. I shall. We'll add another pile to the corpses. It goes through <laughs> your mind. <laughs> Tonight we'll be civilized in our actions. Your turn. You're next. You were talking to her. Go forth. Snip whispers Lamacus. in the night. I am whispers in the night. She just grabs a mask on the top of the stack. Hands it to you. And what does it look like? You got the deer mask. The mask of the deer. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> it fits halfway around your face. Your trunk protrudes out from it. Sure. <laughs> she looks at it, she's like... She puts it back in the stack. And she hands you the owl mask, which has a little better of a fitting for around the trunk. Sure. And she gives you the owl mask. Mm. The deer mask is next. Who's next? You are next, or am I? Let's see. I'm next. <laughs> You're next. Yeah, yeah you are. are. <laughs> <laughs> deer mask. I hand over my invitation. You hand the invitation over. I am Whispers in the Night. She hands you the deer mask. I am not. You are nobody. <laughs> you are next. She grabs the next mask in the stack. The mask of the boar. boar. So close. I will we'll wait just beyond for him. For who? The oh. boar. The, the boar. The boar. Are you waiting for your friends as well, Ryzen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you all walk in together, and you don't hide yourselves very well. 
just so you know, if anyone was to see you two Especially behind the mask, side. they know who you are immediately. But as you're looking around this room, it's really hard to tell. And the front entranceway is a large grandeur hall. It is open and spacious. It does have the grand staircase that comes around to a balcony. You see a few people that are mingling at the top of the steps and uh, on the balcony as well. Everyone has a mask on. People are talking. Some are moving through this uh, chamber into the hallway to the next. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Write down your masks, by the way. Yeah, I did. Logic dictates that we should split up to cover more ground. However, I feel like that's a frowned upon. Perhaps we should stick together for a little while. <laughs> that is the way we operate. Ah. We all stick together all the time, and we never separate the party. Let's go to the bathroom. I don't need to go to the bathroom. I'm going over to the bunch bowl. No, I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bunch bowl. It is a wine bowl. It's huge. But yeah, I'm going to take my cup that I get from somewhere and I'm going to dip it in. Okay. Already getting drunk. Just like you would. I'm going to look for the uh, bowl mask person. <laughs> the first thing you do is look for the bull mask. Of course you do. Uh, yeah, they're actually not very far from you, mingling with a few different animals. One is the squirrel. Um, one is the lynx. You see them. Yep. Okay. That's it? You, fa you found them. Um, they start moving through the just hall. Just the stare. <laughs> Ominously. <laughs> Uh, Cleve, if yes. you want the mask, just go ask for the mask. Okay. I will approach them. You approach the person wearing the mask. Would you be interested in trading masks? Excuse me. She says. Cleve, that is a pickup line in the masquerade world. This was mine, selected specifically for this event. Darn, I was hoping to. <laughs> you didn't I, even fight I'm, for it. <laughs> I'm putting my ear up and I'm listening and I go over there and I'll say, but ma'am, in the spirit of this... Oh, you are something, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Who invited the animals to this party? She turns around with a huff. I'm so sorry that we disturbed She's you. She's walking away. I take out my long sword. <laughs> <laughs> then die. <laughs> Kill the racist. <laughs> now, come Cleve. We'll, we'll rejoin Appian. Mm. Yes. You say as you turn around and you poof, smack right into a little half lane. Right in the kneecaps. He's like poof. Ah! Oh, excuse me. He's holding the mask. It looks like it kind of cracked down the nose piece. He hits you pretty hard. You hit him. Um, it's like when a car hits a truck. <laughs> Who are you? Oh. Get out of the way, loaf. And he pushes you, but he doesn't actually push he, he you. He pushes me? <laughs> he doesn't actually move you, but he pushes you. Excuse me, friend. No, there's no excuse for you. People here are very rude. At this point, I start creeping back over. <laughs> you see all the ruckus. Mm, what is... Apologize. Uh, hey, no names here. Oh. What should I call you? you uh, what? Dear. I okay. said apologize. I am very sorry that I offended you. No. Apologize. That's not an apology. I am very sorry that I bumped into you. That's right. I use Druidcraft to create a skunk smell, and I waft it right towards him. You smell like shit, and he walks away. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he will smell like that for a long time. <laughs> Be good, Appian. Uh, I am. 
I will have to say, though. I just urinated on a ficus plant. <laughs> what is a ficus plant? It's that one. <laughs> Should I urinate on plants as well? Are we marking our areas? That's mine. <laughs> Don't do it over there. I will mark this area over here on the other side. Okay. So we must find this Prospero. As you say that, a man walks up from behind. Welcome to my ball. You turn around and that's Prospero, who is also in a mask and really fancy robes. Um, you are so out of your league at this party when you're standing next to him. It looks like this probably costs as much as you can make in a year as a commoner. What's and his mask? His mask is just a regular um, masquerade ball mask. It's black and white. Mm -hmm. um, one side it's black, the other side it's white, and it kind of has the split gradient in the middle. Okay. And so just he eye. also has um, some cloth going over his face, so you can't see his face at all. Okay. It is very good to meet you. You must be the fabled Ryzen. I am. And Cleave. And that must make you happy. I am so glad that you could join me here. I have heard of your ventures and I have heard of your great deeds. Mm. Tonight is a night to relax. A night to take in the pleasures of life. Some might even say a night of debauchery. I do not often take in the pleasures. Then tonight is your night. He I, raises a wine no, glass. I mean, I... Do, you, do not, any of you a, have a wine glass already? Oh, yeah, I have that because I dipped it into the you wine. You definitely did. Yeah. But did you guys? No, oh, probably not yet, no. So he'll... Ting. He takes a drink. I'll just kind of hold it on to it, though. Mm. I won't take a drink, but I'll hold on to it. This was a very nice and warm welcome. It seems you're... Visitors tonight are easily offended. That little one, Piccolo, <laughs> he's always trying to cause trouble. But give him no mind. You presented yourself very respectfully, and for that I thank you. That was... Uh, you will fit right in with those kinds of manners. He used the words... Fit right in. Should this sign. Should we show him the cod piece? <laughs> no. I have quite a few guests to go greet tonight. <laughs> Very good. More people that I need to talk to. I would love to catch up with you later. Absolutely. Until we see each other again. Cheers There's to you. There's many night. festivities. Feel free. If you want to go to the ballroom, or before you get there, you can have your fortune read. You have a ball pit? The ballroom. Oh, ballroom. If okay. you dance, <laughs> there are many rating for a partner. Mm. We may go gander at the ballroom. Uh, cheers to the night. There is a tattooist, if you want to go there. She is uh, charging a nominal fee. But her work is divine. Do we get matching tattoos tonight? We could get roses. We could get roses. Yes. I will see you again. He kind of turns around, he does the cape flare. And he walks up the grand staircase. You see him ascend the steps. A few people, everyone, when he walks by, turns their head. They all know who he is just by the mask and the way he carries himself. Even though he's hidden completely, everyone can tell. This is the Marquis Mascara Prospero. Well, I must say, he is very polite. Yes. And so what shall we do? Do we tail him? We were sent to observe. I suggest we do so from the various vantage points around. 
perhaps the, the different forms of entertainment so that we can have a good view. Hmm. You see him talking with a lady at the top of the stairs. Probably a lady by the bust. Um, it's hard to tell. But he turns around and walks through the doors. He has to actually open those. They don't stay open. And um, leaves her on the balcony by herself. Hmm. She Maybe. now like grabs the railing and just leans over and she's watching, like people watching. What mask did the girl in front of us get? She wore the links. She, she was, was with the uh, bowl. Hmm. Yes. And she has already headed towards the ballroom. I believe it would be good to speak to the one on the balcony. However, they seem to not be agreeable with my appearance. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe uh, you, Appian, would you like to go find out who this was at the top of the ball? Yes. You two, head into the ballroom. I will see if I can get her in there. Oh, <laughs> maybe we can find the links. <laughs> so you two are headed towards the ballroom, and you're going to go up the stairs. Yep. We split the party. Cool. <laughs> we'll start with um, you two. Hmm. So you're walking down the hallway. The general um, flow of traffic is going this way now. People are starting to filter out of the main chambers. When you go through this hall, most doors are closed that might go anywhere. Um, you actually see someone in front of you grab the knob, and then it's locked. Hey you. you can see them jiggle the knob, and then keeps walking. That was the squirrel mask that did that. You see a lady who has a table set up in the hallway as if she's a merchant. She's got a big, long, clawed light. It's just holding a light down like that. It looks like a hand that's grabbed the bulb. And she has cards laid out on the table. She has a few people in line. Doesn't have a sign or anything, but this is obviously the lady that tells fortunes. You don't even have to have a good intelligence to know that. I say to you, what's your intelligence? Eight. Eight? You two are dummies. <laughs> I'm glad you're going together. But you don't have to have a good intelligence to understand that. And she's uh, reading someone's fortune. Mm. I'll go kick over. So you see her taking out different cards from her deck laying them on the table in a different pattern every time. You have great fortune in your next few days. Beware of the man in red. That person moves on. He drops a platinum on the table. Mm. Did you want your fortune, Ram? Yes. What you look is... at her and she's got deep wrinkles, gray hair, and a fancy braid for no who mask. she is. Um, no mask. Mm. She is the fortune teller. Do you frequent these parties often? I've been here a few times. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes, of course, I will, I will get my fortune read. This seems like fun, doesn't it, Cleave? It is fun for me. Fortunes are fickle, but let's see. She starts arranging the cards on the desk. It's a fancy tablecloth, and the cards have a good contrast to the black tablecloth that's draped overwards. Oh, right. She lays down something that looks like a cross. She lays down a few more cards. One has a, a skull on it. It seems your fortune is not very good. Unlike my last patron, you are going to be looking at a night of terror. Hmm. <laughs> how, could, how could there be terror in a great place like this? It looks like 
Yes, the nightmare. You will have very bad dreams. Hmm. It's just dreams. That's the end of her reading. Cleve, would you like to get your fortune read? I do not believe so. We should move on. There are many booths. Before I go, thank you so much. This this was exciting. However, uh, just was wondering, what do you know of the Marquis' uh, love interests? <laughs> Give me a persuasion roll. Oh yeah. Gossip. You're actually going for gossip. I love it. Gossip from the first. I mean, this time. is why you're here. Yeah. I forgot that. <laughs> uh thirteen. Thirteen. I don't like to dabble in gossip. I uh, like to dabble in fate. Mm. Sorry. I apologize. Maybe for the right reading or the right price. She looks at the empty uh, place where she already pulled the last platinum off. I'll, t I'll, I'll slip her ten gold. That's one platinum. That's just for the reading. Oh. Um, I'll slip her. She grabs it. A slip of 30 gold. She takes the 30 gold. Is that a lot of money, guys? I don't know what a lot of it is. It's all relative. Okay. She looks around. She makes sure you get close so no one else can hear the next few people that are in line behind you. I raise my ears up. <laughs> you put your ears around her like a mother bird. <laughs> I've heard that he's taken a few love interests just this past month alone. He doesn't seem to be a man that wants to settle. Mm. But these are all just rumors. <clears throat> he likes the younger women. Is that right? You and didn't hear this from me. And what if I asked you about a bird that might have fallen from the sky? Ah, no, we're done. She kind of leans back. Next reading. Would you like to get your foot around? I, sh I flash my gold. My pouch of gold. She like flicks her eyes towards it and then immediately away. And you can just tell with the natural insight she's done. Hmm. Let's go to the ballroom, Cleve. Yes. Appian, you're walking up this grand staircase. You pass by a couple people that are hand in hand, fingers locked, walking down the stairs, admiring the people below them. One has the plague doctor mask with the long beak. One has the a different mask. Um, you're wearing deer. Deer. Uh, this one is of an animal. This is the cat's mask. The cat. They pass by you. You go up to the top. The woman, you can just tell, like I told you, it's pretty easy to tell that it's a woman. Hair is coming out of the back. Big bust. She is just standing there, the one you've been targeting. She's people watching, and she doesn't even see you approaching, you think. Just terrible at people watching me. She's not watching you. <laughs> I go up and pretend I'm walking past, but then look out and see if I can spot what she's looking at. Or what is she looking at, Give like one insight. particular corner? Um, obviously, I won't be able to pick a person. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Um, that was a skills. Eleven. Eleven. It's not easy to tell what she's watching from this angle. You could do it, but you'd have to intrude. You'd have to get right mm -hmm. next to her and, like, mimic what she's doing. And she 
She's a cat? She's, She's a cat mask. cat mask. Okay. No, no, no. The cat mask was the person walking down. Oh, you yeah. hadn't seen her mask up close, but it's just a normal masquerade ball mask as well. Mm-hmm. Not of an animal. So I will just... So she still hasn't noticed you. So I'll just walk up next to her and put my hand on the railing as well. Let's see. On the opposite side or near her hand? Uh, well, if she's standing here... She's got her hands up, on the rail. I would come up and just, yeah, stand next to her and put my hands on the railing as well. You have about a half a foot between your hand and hers, mm-hmm. but that's enough for her to notice that you're there. Mm-hmm. One who watches from above... I would have assumed you wear the hawk or the eagle. I don't wear an animal. Who are you? This is a good vantage point to see what she was looking at. And she was pretty much staring straight at the entrance. Mm -hmm. As you're talking, you see two people in masks close the doors. It is strange. I have been here just a few moments, and already at this masquerade, I have heard two ask someone's identity. What, what is you the point of wearing a mask? You don't have to give your true identity at a masquerade ball. And I will not. My name is Val. It's really good to meet you. Continue. If you would like, we could... um. Go to the back. What is the point in a ball if you can't get close to someone that you don't know? I like to come here and experience the foods, the wines, the people. I just, what do you I, say? I turn my back to the ballroom below. And I hold out my arm. <laughs> you lean on the railing, you turn your back. She turns and grabs your arm. Let me go fade to black. She gives you a good five minutes. And that's it. And then you're moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, she takes you to a room that you're probably not supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. And... It's not the room that um, Prospero went into. Prospero went into. Okay. She definitely didn't go that way. She actually went to a room by the staircase at the bottom where Mm -hmm. the door was closed. When you walk in, it's a pretty fancy office slash den. It does not have another entrance or exit. There's only one way in. When you go in, she locks the door. Mm. But you have an inspiration for this moment. Given to you by Pokti. Pokti? (laughs) You got an inspiration. Well then, let's find something to roll so I can be inspired. Give me a perception. Natural 20. Skills. Perception is 7. 22. 22? Mm Mm-hmm. You don't need that inspiration right now. You are rocking it as you're rocking her. And you see... (laughs) That's right. I like to make Matt feel awkward. That's the best. You see a tapestry that's depicting um, a lion and its cub. They're kind of just laying in a big savanna field. The tapestry kind of wafts ever so slightly. You see a little breeze behind it. Hmm. But this room is closed off. Like I said, there's only one entrance. Yeah. So we're going to roll off the desks onto the ground and over the floor. <laughs> oh my God. And into the wall. <laughs> this is the best. Mm-hmm. You have a great tumble. Yep. What's your plan? Uh, right now, she's just along for the ride. Yeah. She still keeps the mask on. Yeah, I figure we're both mask only at this point. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Well, one of us aren't wearing any pants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why do you? What you told Cleve not to wear pants or to wear pants, but you you get to take yours off. I'll not fair. I remember to put them back not on. Fair, <laughs> not fair. <laughs> What's your plan there? Plan to roll over toward the the thing that waving tapestry. Okay. Because do you have dark vision? Um, I think elves, do elves? Do, right? I think so, yeah. So, even though there's like dim light in here because there's only a few candles and one lantern lit in this room, the tapestry hangs almost to the ground, and when you're up against the wall, you look up, and you can see it kind of waft, and there is a little space between the tapestry and the wall, but the biggest thing is your natural perception. Your passive perception is enough to feel a slight breeze from a crack in the wall. Mm. It doesn't mm. look different, though. It looks like a false like wall. wall. Okay. So, uh... Yeah. You know, standard pillow talk. Uh, there's no is pillow this, talk. Is this, the room, was, uh, is this the room minutes, you normally go to? She's like, it was fun. She puts her clothes back on and leaves. Mm. She leaves you alone. Quickly. Yes, indeed. She's mm. got to get around a couple more times. Yeah. <laughs> she gives you a five out of seven. A seven star scale? <laughs> Weird. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> I, I get dressed. Put my armor back on. Put my cape and cloak back on. I check for, you know, the phone wallet keys. Make sure she didn't run off with any of my primary things. Put the mask on. And I pull back the tapestry. Pull back the tapestry. And it's a wall. There's a slight crack that you've already started to investigate. And it runs all the way down for about six feet. There's a crack at the top. There's a crack on the other side. It seems like the shape of a door. Hmm. Near, is there like one of those classic, like a lever? A lever. There's no lever. Um, or a, a lantern right nearby. A can lantern be pulled. nearby. Tap, 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 tap. You touch it and you feel slight depression as you push. Just from a very light tap. You give it a good push. <clears throat> and when you do, you feel it click. <clears throat> and it slightly opens. Yeah. <sighs> I'll kind of look around and I'll look down the hallway. Is there anything that it's a you have 60 foot actual um, staircase going down? It seems like this door is at the top of some kind of staircase. Okay. So I'll step in. It doesn't go down very far. It's about five steps. And you're now, you feel like you're walking on some sort of sub level right underground level. And it's a small hallway. And I flip my cape inside out so it, I'm now look green. And I take and I swap to the lizard mask. <laughs> okay. And, and then I move through. And then I go down. You start going through the halls. They're empty. You feel a slight breeze from what you think is a door that's been opened from the outside. You can see a, kind of a night outline at the end of that hall where the door is still left open. Mm -hmm. You could go investigate that way or you could go inwards, which is probably closer to inside the um, keep. I take out my beard cloth and I put that on also. And then I go inward. And you go in. Back to you two. You're headed into the ballroom. The festivities are um, the best they've gotten so far. People are dancing. There's a full um, orchestra. 
well, not Largus Drive, but there's like uh, six different people that are doing music. There's actually a, a bard that's telling stories in the corner. He's seems like a natural orator. There's a few belly dancers that are putting on a performance. This is kind of a festival type situation for a ball. You're a little out of place. You don't know what to think or what to feel. No one really comes up to you and talks to you. You are off-putting. Mm -hmm. So unless you put yourself out there, people avoid you. They kind of part around you as you're walking through, and you can feel the crowd part away. Cleve, it's been... I don't believe I've ever really enjoyed these parties. <laughs> I have not either, but at least it is not hard to get through. People get out of the way pretty easily. This is true. There is a circle of people that are sitting in chairs. These chairs are all arranged in a circle. And they are playing some kind of card game. There's not even a table in the middle of them. They all are pulling cards from a deck. Hmm. And they pass the deck around. And you see them each have like these, these are like, big chairs, almost like uh, thrones on each of them, and they have a wine glass on the arm. Um, you could go investigate that. You could go to the tattooist who is supposedly in the courtyard you've heard rumors of as you're walking by. Maybe we go to the tattooist that Prospero talked about Weren't we waiting for Appian in the ballroom, though? Mm. We should be on the lookout for him there. I don't want to stay split for too long. This is true. What is going on at this table? It's not a table. Are they it's cards? It's a circle of chairs. Okay. They seem to be playing some sort of ballroom game where they're drawing a card from the deck and they're either drinking or telling other people to drink, depending on what card they draw. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of laughter, there's a lot of cheer. This game seems kind of like a, a party game, where there's no real winners or losers, there's just drunkards. I don't... It'll be like drunk person Jenga. Right. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I do. Um... I am not interested in staying here at this chairs. Let's just go and see what the tattoo artist has to say about... I'm sure she's been here many times and she might have information about our suitor. Mm -hmm. We'll be back very soon. Okay. So you two head to the courtyard. You head through the halls. So, <laughs> Appian... You're walking through the tunnels. All right. By yourself. Obviously, so people are not supposed to go back here. As you pass by here, right here, you see a creature in the other room. They seem to be uh, crouched on the ground. Looks like they were performing some sort of prayer or ritual or something because they're drawing on the ground with some kind of chalk and they have most of a circle completed do you have religion yeah go ahead and roll it roll that beautiful bean footage mm -hmm. skills religion oh it's time for that inspiration thanks uh Pokti. Pokti. Oh my gosh. Wow. That was a natural 20. I went from a 1 to a 20. <laughs> Pokti saving the day. Nice. That's amazing. So, natural 20. This is a summoning ritual. With a natural 20, you can tell this is of the abyssal nature. Mm -hmm. They're summoning something from the abyss, or at least that's what the symbol would represent. Whether they can actually complete it and make the magic work, you're not really sure of that. But as it so happens, she looks up at you, you see her eyes, they're bright red, and her wings <laughs> flare out like a bat. 
Mm-hmm. You rolled a six on initiative. Yep. We tied. Roll again. What? 14, 18, 19, 20, 21. You live. Fuck yeah. I say. Fuck yeah. You were attempting to summon me. You're trying to deceive her. Um, Roll a deception at disadvantage. Thirteen. Thirteen. You're not the devil I was trying to summon. I care not for your mistakes. She stands up. When she stands up, she's about six five. Her wings almost reach to the ceiling at the very tips. Is she wearing a mask? She is not wearing a mask. She has a pale face and two small horns that protrude from her head. She has fiery red hair, bright fiery red hair. Her wings look like that of a devil. Mm. You see a tail swing from around her and come up front as if she can control it, manipulate it very finely. I take the defensive action. So I'm not sure what she's going to do, but I kind of take that half step back, knowing that she's probably going to do something terrible. I need you to kill someone tonight. I have the contract written up. And what do you offer me? I offer someone's soul. Roll another deception check. Not a disadvantage anymore. Um, I would like to use my wild shape Mm -hmm. to let the flies and bees and stuff come pouring out of all the openings of my rope. I'll give you advantage. Yes. Twelve this time. (laughs) What is your true name? Roll a religion. Fifteen. A devil wouldn't tell their true name. Mm-hmm. It'll take far more than some stranger soul for that. There's a guest here tonight. Someone attending the ball. I need them eliminated. Their true name is Appian. What else of this, Appian? I need them dead. True death. Soul captured. Can you do that? Is that the soul you offer me? No. There will be plenty more tonight. She smiles. You guys. You're walking towards the courtyard by yourselves. You want to go get matching tattoos now. And like I said, people (laughs) ignore you as you pass by them. They tend to uh, disregard you on purpose. When you get to the courtyard, give me a perception. There's a devil. Natural 20. Bingo. Tell me everything. Give me all your secrets. I got 17, so. Yeah, all the secrets. That's really good. Yeah. There is a creature huddled over what you think is someone or a human. It is not um, a human. 
and it's not part of this masquerade ball. It's not wearing any clothes. It's got uh, sinewy muscles and bones and pale flesh. It's eating whatever corpse is on the ground in this courtyard, slightly behind a stone bench. You see some inks and some quills that are <laughs> set up on the bench, but there's no person sitting there. And you can hear it with your natural 20. Okay, and are there people around in the courtyard? There's no one in here right now. Just you two. Roll your initiative. I'd like to rage. <laughs> Looks up at you. Wait, do I have any kind of advantage? No, I don't. God damn it. As this happens, Ryzen, yeah. you are not right. surprised with the natural 20. All right. Because you look up and dripping from the top. You guys are coming outside into the courtyard from the top of the arch. Is this slimy long ooze that's ready to drop onto the first person that comes through, which just so happens to be you two. But you're not surprised. You are surprised for the first round. Mm. The creature that looked up is also surprised, just so you know. Mm. So let's go to combat. I'm going to set up a second battlefield. Because we didn't use the first one. I'm time. trying to f get out of... I didn't use the first one. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Brian <laughs> and his... Um... Date for the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Date for the night. <laughs> you have to offer me a lot more than a soul. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put on some battle music. Gotta pay the troll toll to get into this boy's hole. <laughs> pay the boy's troll soul. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that last night. That's why it popped in my head. <laughs> Let's go ahead and push that to the you side. the boy's hole yesterday? No, you gotta pay the troll toll to get into this boy's hole. Soul. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. <laughs> boy's <laughs> Um... I don't know if I have any good representations for the boys. building. <laughs> so we'll just say that the courtyard, you the, came out here. You could use that. Just use the edge of it. The tower? The tower. Yeah. Use. Yeah, this is fine. So you came out here, and then um, the building kind of is in an octagon pattern all around. Ooh, octagonal. But it's all walled off, and there's a door going to each section of the building. What'd you roll in your initiatives? Nine. Nine. Thirteen. Thirteen. The ooze goes first, and it drops on... Is the ooze surprised as well? No. Oh, That's... Monster ooze. Yeah, Is the uh, creature. Um, give me a religion... Actually, what's your passive religion? Uh, that would just be your 10 plus the skill. Uh, that's wisdom, right? Wisdom plus proficiency. Uh, so it'd be 4. 14? Or, so 14, yeah. That's enough to tell. That creature that's bending over when it looks up, that's a ghast. You've heard of these creatures. You haven't encountered one, but you... Um, know they're very dangerous, especially when they claw or bite. They're really dangerous. You want to avoid being hit by them, if at all possible. So, first, ooze goes after you. It drips right onto you. What's your AC? Well, with my shield, it's a 20. Your shield is not equipped. It takes an action to equip it. It's the worst. So it's an 18. 18. That is a hit. It just lands right on you, and it's now starting to drape its whole body up and around your shoulders. So you are going to take... 
five acid damage just from touching it. Oh, let's put you guys on the battlefield. So you come out the door. Pew, pew, pew. You both just pop out and it lands right on you. Sneeze on it. I have a news. It's not the same one, but oh, the pudding. I'll use it. They're pretty nice for that. It starts to uh, wrap itself around you, and it's starting to envelop you. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> can I take the disengage action and get out of there? Um, it's grappling you just from touching you. Oh, okay. So you could take the escape action, but it's starting to envelop you. So you'd, I'd probably want to take the escape action. <laughs> Depends. Whatever you want to do. This creature is behind a bench here. It was crouched down. There's a woman there. Uh, partially eaten. Yeah, I'm taking the escape action and get it. Okay, give me either acrobatics or athletics. Ooh, that's good. Uh, so I just rolled a 17, I've got plus six, so can we... You win three. You shrug it off, you throw the ooze up against the stone of the archway. What parts of it landed on you? You look up and you see there's a long trail coming down behind it. Ugh. You know, but you are free. You can move. Uh, I'll move to the opposite side of Cleave. Okay. Room. Right there. Um, it would get an attack of opportunity, but it doesn't. Because <laughs> I take gentle GM. Okay. You just know, like, in combat... When you move out of their threat range, right, right, they right, hit right, you. Right. This thing just seems to slither and fall. Okay, it's now like dripping down. One long snot, like a uh, tendril, is like lapping at the dirt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Clear surprise. Uh, technically, I would have cleared surprise before you. I think because I rolled higher initiative. Oh, did you? I think so. I rolled a thirteen. I rolled a nine. Oh. oh, so I already cleared. Surprise. So you cleared the surprise. Yep. Did you have a reaction you wanted to use? Not a reaction, no. Okay. And this creature clears surprise. Back to the top. The ooze kind of adjusts itself. You see the whole thing shift over and start to fall onto you. What's your AC? Uh, 17. It actually hits as well. So it just hits you. And you're automatically uh, grappled by it. Not restrained. Take seven acid damage as it starts wrapping itself around you. Okay. So now. Well, actually, can... it's this creature's turn. Hmm. It stands up and it hops over the bench. <laughs> And when it hits it, it looks kind of like a feral creature. It's crouching down with its claws wrapped around the front side of the bench. That's difficult terrain. So two, three, four, five. And it goes that way to cut off line of sight. Uh, now it's my turn? Your turn. Uh, I'm Actually, gonna... let's see. It went... Ooze went, it went, then you two. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming I have not gotten my rage off yet. Nope. Okay, so I will rage. Bonus action rage. Bonus action rage. What kind of barbarian are you? I am a bear barbarian. 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 Okay. Barbarian. And... Uh, let's see. When I'm grappled, I have disadvantage to attack, or is it straight roll? Uh, you are not restrained. Straight roll. Straight roll. So I will attack twice at this ooze. Okay, roll to hit. Reckless. Reckless. As a 19 to hit. So you you have a big axe. Yep. 
kind of just raise it. When you hit against it, it cleaves through, slaps against the stone, and you can feel it split apart. And it kind of coalesces back together. But some ichor does spray out into the area. It's kind of on you, too. It's now raining a little bit of ichor on you. Second one is a 24 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. Did you do damage already? Not yet. Okay. Go ahead and do damage. First one is, let's see, uh, 11 damage. 11 damage. Second one is, make sure, double check, I have two attacks. I'm pretty sure I do. You can, is your you um, weapon magic? Yes. Okay. I was pretty sure it's at level 5 you get double attack, but I wasn't yeah. saying it in there. As a barbarian, you should get a second attack. Yeah, extra attack. Okay. Just making sure before I do damage on the second one. Uh, that is uh, 14 damage for the second. 14 damage on the second. On the second strike, you hit it again. <laughs> and it splits apart. And now both parts fall to the ground, one still wrapped around you, the other on the ground, and the other one starts to slither. Go ahead, Ryzen. Um, There's now can I see this guy? a split ooze. It cut off line of sight. All right. These trees are pretty um, trimmed and sculpted. Mm-hmm. And they go all the way to the ground, kind of like those big bushes that are sculpted. So, and I can't see him. No, but okay. you saw where he went. So, if I moved over here, would I be able to see him? You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. My goal is to be within thirty feet of him. So you can see him. He's not exactly where he's placed. He's actually further back. By this tree. Uh, is that within 30 feet? Uh, where's my magic measure? Yes, but you had to move up. You moved 20 about to get there. So you have 10 left. Um, um, so can I can I see him and then these two blobs? Yep. All right. I'm gonna cast Bane. Oh, yep. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Bane. Bane. What's it do? So up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range must be charisma. Make a charisma saving throw. Whenever a target that fails the saving throw makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, and it's up to one minute, uh-huh. um, the target must roll a d4 and subtract that number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. Oh, so okay. Opposite of bless. I thought it was a like fear or something. But does it have an effect like charm, fear, exhaust, frighten, or it's just no nope. negatives? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nope, what do they negative. roll? Uh, uh, charisma saving throw. Charisma saving throw, well, and let's it's start uh, with the ooze. And I have a thirteen. <laughs> it rolled a natural fourteen, and it has negative two. <laughs> So it actually fails. And then the creature over there, behind the tree, the ghast, rolled a total of two. Awesome. (laughs) It's concentration, right? Is that technically three creatures, or is it the ooze and the... I don't know if it's considered separate when it's split. Uh, Does it say? What have you done? (laughs) Hmm. I have cleaved it. <laughs> <laughs> cleave it alone. You cleave, cleave it alone. alone. It's two creatures. So the second ooze that split apart up to three. succeeds. So one ooze fails, one ooze succeeds. Okay. And I'll say it's the ooze that's now slithering free is the one that uh, succeeded. Okay. So the ooze that's on you is the one that failed. And that's the end. Back that to is the top. My turn. So, Ooze's turn. There's one on you, and you're just going to take damage just because it's on you. Mm-hmm. 
12 acid damage. So half to six. Half to six. You're within range, and the creature now, you see it. It looks over at you. Its eyes are glowing red. <laughs> darts right towards you. Okay. What's your AC? 18. Right now, because I don't have my shield. Uh, was Bane an action? Or yes, it was. Okay. Yep. And it rolls a d4 and subtracts that from its attacks? Yeah. 19, 18, 17, 16, plus 3. 17, 18, 19. Fuck off. It hits. <laughs> so the first hit is with the bite. It rams into you, and it just reaches down and mangles the part of your neck that's exposed. 2d8. 2d8. 13 piercing damage. Then it goes to claw you. Actually, <laughs> it can't. It can't. It can only do one action. We did split the party, I guess. God. <laughs> I'll roll the concentration, I guess. To do roll concentration for me. <laughs> it's it's bad, dude. It drops. I roll a seven. Seven plus your con. It's a constitution saving throw. Okay. I rolled a three. Oh, wow. Bane goes away. That was its turn. Banished. Banana. Your first? Yep. Before Matt. Uh, Go ahead, Cleave. I cannot move because the ooze is surrounding me? Um, no, actually, it's grappling you, but it's not... Um, Restraining you, so I can just move out of it. No, you can move with it. Okay, it's wrapping around you, kind of like a cloak at this point. Gotcha. Uh, I saw that thing come in, and it looked like a uh, bigger target than the ooze. So I will move over to the uh, ghast and uh, take two swings at it. Okay. Reckless. Okay. So twenty-five to hit. I think that's a hit. And a 19 to hit. That is also a hit. Let's see what you can do. It's a uh, six damage. Six damage? That's with your rage bonus? Oh, shoot. I haven't been adding my rage bonuses. Plus so two. it's eight. And add four more damage to those. That works. Yep. That's Retroactive fun. damage. Uh, yeah. And uh, that is 12 with my rage bonus. Okay. Go ahead, Ryzen. Um, question. If I use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark, mm -hmm. can I also smite? No. Wait, yes. Because it's not a spell. Not Searing Smite or Thunder Smite. Not Spirit, smite. yeah, just but, yeah. if I 100... All right, bonus action, Hunter's Mark okay. on this dude. Okay. So, and I'm going to oh. cast mm -hmm. first yeah, level good. there. So that's going to add an uh, extra D6 nice. to my attacks. And I am going to smite this guy smite. with a second level. Well, you don't have to smite until you hit. Oh, okay. Yeah, so roll so if you hit. miss, then you Right, to... all right. So let's just see what my... All right, so it's a plus eight. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, so that is uh, 12. It says 20. That's a hit. And my second attack is a 19 plus my... All right. So roll your first damage. All right, so... And I'm going to use two... Before smite. you roll smite, roll your first damage. Okay. Uh, so that's a d8... So three plus seven is ten. Plus your hunter's mark. Plus my hunter's mark was is plus two, right? That's so, a d6. Or d6. Thanks, guys. There's a lot going on right now. So 14 altogether. 14. When you hit it, you cleave through the shoulder, through the arm, and its arm's now hanging off. It looks like it's going to come in and swing for you, but it's not connected by much muscle or tendon left. You definitely laid into it 
Um, it's really wounded, more than bloodied. Mm. All right, I'm going to swing again then. You already hit it. I got a natural 20. Well, you rolled twice already to hit. Did I? Yeah, you hit both. Oh, okay. Damn it, because that was a natural 20. <laughs> Sorry. All right, oh. so then I'm going to come up and finish it off. You can choose to roll smite or just regular damage. Regular. Okay. Regular. Roll your damage. So, uh, do, 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 do 14, oh, 15. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You definitely kill it. Finish it. Uh, so, like, I hack its arm, and then I'm just going to go <laughs> come up right through the neck. Okay. Back to the top. The ooze. This ooze starts trailing towards you. And it's going to try to s- grab onto your leg. That was a wonderful sound effect. The slithering. It does not hit you, though. Um, it tries to, but you're too well armored and it wraps around and it's kind of sliding down off. You're able to shake your leg and it uh, kicks shake free. That creature is dead, though. Your turn, then. Cleave. Did I take damage? Oh, wait, you take damage just because the other one you're wearing like a cloak now. Mm-hmm. It's starting to wrap itself and stretch itself around you, and it's getting worse over time. Mm. You can tell it's getting worse. It's starting to hurt more. So, Where are you? Maybe. 11 I'm past the damage. So, so Five. Five. <laughs> Should be more, <laughs> quote unquote. Go ahead. Uh, so I have one attacking me, which I am not happy with. So I'll start by trying to hit that one. Reckless, of course. Okay. Oh wait, did the other one? Oh, I hit you. That's right. Okay. Try to hit. Me. Try to hit you. That is a twenty-four to hit. That is a hit. Don't even roll damage. Oh, okay. It splits. Poof. There's now two more little ones. <laughs> <laughs> Which one were you hitting? The one on you? Yeah, the one on me. Okay. There's a piece that's kind of like trailing off that you cut. And it hits the ground like a big snot tendril. And it starts moving. I'll swing at it again. I'm okay. over there. That's what I do. It's so smart. <laughs> It's a 25 to hit. That one you smite out of existence. (laughs) (laughs) So now we have a big one, or like a half one, and then a a fourth one. Yeah, go ahead. You see these keep splitting as he hits them. Yeah, but one disappeared, so I'm just going to... I'm going to smash one, and then I'm going to smash that smaller one that comes off. Roll the hit. Oh, oh, wait, you can use a bonus action to transfer your hunter's mark. Oh, yeah, bonus action, blah, 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 Just blah. Just so you know. And so you can do that for up to an hour. Right. Because that's how long it lasts. Uh, so it gives me, do I get any? It's just plus some damage. Just some damage. All right, you get so. at least six. Yeah. You can track it if it um, gets away, but. 13? 13 is a hit. Damn. Really? It doesn't move very fast. Okay. And then. What's your damage? Don't even roll the hit yet. Roll your damage first. But that was a natural 20. <laughs> okay. Well, keep your roll. But always do your first roll sure. and damage. Uh, that's 9 plus 7 is um, uh, 16. 16? So you hit it. It doesn't split. Wait, what are you wielding? A sword? The long sword. Oh, it splits. <laughs> oh, all right. Into two little ones. All right. So you got three little ones now. Okay, yep. so then a natural 20 for my... So then that's seven and five. Okay, would... it's dead. Okay. You can kill one of the little ones. And then, yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's turn. There's two little ones. Or is there one now? There's two. There's two. Yeah, you split it. One's on two. you. Mm-hmm. One's next to him. The one next to you tries to hit you, or attach itself to you. It doesn't. And the one on you um, does a little less now, because you split it. Or more. Fifteen acid Seven. damage. Seven. Seven. Halved. Go ahead. 
Uh, Cleave. I almost called you Rising. <laughs> uh, reckless, because that's what I do. So, 24 to hit. It's a hit. It's dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your strength bonus is plus... Four. Plus rage, rage is it has plus five two. hit points. Okay, yeah. There's still one more. Yeah, can we get the other one? Oh, was there me? another? Yeah, last on one. Me. Do you hit it? Yes. It's dead. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> 26. <laughs> We're going to switch over again. You killed the snap. I'll just say, I'll say to Axe before uh, we switch over, just be like, something foul is amiss. I have an axe, but I am cleave. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> something is amiss. Let's go find our friend, and then we'll go talk to the demarquee. Yes. All right. Brian. Or... I should say Appian. What was the part we left off on? Um, she asked her true name. Asked my true name. I told her to stuff it. She said, okay, go kill this schmuck named Appian. That's right. <laughs> and I was trying to ask for some sort of detail on what she wants or what she... I think it ended with you saying it's much more than a soul that you'll need. No. To do that. Yeah, she, I think she was going to... I was trying to. She's offering you souls. Mm -hmm. And she said there will be plenty more tonight. Do you accept the deal? Mm. Or should I cast you back to where I found you? Don't take too long to think about it, devil. I require all. Half. Half the Done. souls reaped. And I walk out. <laughs> where do you walk? I go back to where you I, were? Yeah. Where you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. You do it. You go back to where you knew. Um, that was the only open room that you pass by. And you go towards the little den... The door is unlocked. You leave. You close your trap door behind you. Yep. So I will drop the extra flies and whatnot. Swap the mask. Go back to a white cape. Hmm. <sighs> oh, shit. <laughs> you avoided the fight. Mm-hmm. Nice. And I scurry back out. When you get out, there's only a few people left in the main chamber. Um, still is Cat Lady still on her perch? Nope, she's left at this point. Okay. You don't see her anywhere here. Very well. Where are you going? Uh, I'll go back downstairs where these guys were. Well, you were already downstairs. And then... Um, yeah, towards the ball? I assumed they were going to head to the ballroom. Okay. Matt. Yeah. Ryzen. Yeah. Give me a constitution check. Uh, I got a plus five for con, so that would be a 23. 23. Let me just check that real quick, though. Sorry, uh, 22. 22. Your eyes are feeling heavy. Oh, damn, dude, why? You are starting to feel sleepy. It's an exhausting fight. Um, even that short burst of energy. I'm going to go over to the woman behind the thing and see what kind of mask she had. Uh, well, if she had a mask, her face is half ripped off. Oh. Eaten. Ugh. Creature was eating her face first. Oh. Um, it got through the face. Whatever's inside got sucked dry. Mm -hmm. And it started reaching to, or uh, making its way down the neck. Check for any signs. She has lots of tattoos on her bare arms, her forearms. Hmm. On the bench that's next to you is the inks and the quills that the tattooist probably used. Ah, uh -huh, so those are probably the tattooists. Check for any signs of identification. I'm going to take a sit right here. Check for identification. 
Um, give me a religion check. Debating if I have a negative to that or not. <laughs> you have a negative one. I do have a negative one, so 14. 14. Um, there's some interesting symbols. You think you've seen them somewhere. You can't recall exactly where, but that's probably some kind of identification. Um, Take her arm and be like, you see these symbols? <laughs> these might mean something. <laughs> I'll go over to there. And You're dumb too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Give me a religion check. I got a religion. Yeah, I got good religion. Came that old religion. Uh, nine. Nine? No. There's some kind of symbols. You've seen them before. You don't remember where. Perhaps I should do as I had done before and less respect the, or more respect the dead. It's interesting because the symbols aren't the same as Aurelian. The eye with the three eyelashes, it's like two intersecting eyes like a Venn diagram. Mm. This is definitely familiar. But now, I believe we should go find Appian, meet up, let him know what's been going on here. And of course, we will need to tell someone about what has happened out in this courtyard. Yes. That we have slain the beasts. Hmm. And it is safe now. Yes. Roll constitution check. Uh, that's a little better. Uh, I got a plus four, so 17. 17? You, like, almost nod off standing up. <sighs> Your body's getting really tired. You're starting to slowly... Just, you want to f sit down somewhere, lay down. Are you okay? I am feeling very exhausted all of a sudden. I am not sure why. But let's keep trekking. Are you adding your plus two on your saves, by the way? Oh, no. So don't forget that. Okay. Forgot about that. Yeah. As a paladin, <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, also, as a paladin, you have healing. Uh, oh yeah, the thing that lay on hands. I'm gonna lay on yep. hands, and um, I have points for a thing. How how does that work? Uh, you can use five of your hit points to well, you can do a status effect. As much hit points as you want. Yep, it's you have. Five times your level, I think it is. So you would have 30. I have 30. Yeah. You could heal so, for 30, or you could spend five to cure any disease, poison, or... Is that it? I think so, yeah. Disease, poison. It'll say right when you click it. I'm going to heal for 20. Okay. All right, that works. Okay. Should he also get a roll to see if he can figure out the, the thing that's making him sleepy? <laughs> yeah, can I? What are you doing? I don't. I don't know. Um, the lay on hands can remove. Oh, can poison. I? Oh, yeah. Can I lay on hands for five to remove this effect? What are you going to remove? My exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> Read the ability. Uh, you have pool of healing power that restores 30 hit points per long rest. As an action, you can touch a creature, restore it, blah, 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 or five, or neutralize and poison affecting the creature. A poison only? Yeah. So you want to try that? Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to try it. You do it, and immediately you feel restored. Because I was grappled by that shit, so. You spend five, and immediately you're restored. Whatever was affecting you is not anymore. Oh. Well, you were bitten, not grappled. Oh, that's right. I was bitten. Well, you were grappled too, but so was he. Yeah, and I don't know. He seems that. fine. His eyes aren't shutting. All right. Well, I'll just rub my shoulder or wherever he bit me and boom. Let's proceed. Let's find Appian. And yes. we'll walk through the ballroom and try to get to Appian now. 
last place okay. we saw him. So you go back to the ballroom, and you haven't seen Appian show up yet, but there is a big dance going on in the ballroom. Everyone is gathered there. It seems like this is where the whole crowd has flowed. And the games have stopped for the most part. The lights have been dimmed, candlelight only. The music is at its highest. This is the climax of the night. Everyone's watching in the middle. And you see... Um, God, I can't remember that guy's name. Lero? Prospero? Prospero. You see Prospero, most heads are turned towards him, and he is dancing with a woman in a cat mask. They are very um, involved in the dance. They are climaxing in Appian Song. Yes. <laughs> this does not bode well for what we were going to tell the princess. Are there any, uh, what looks like guards, security, someone who's not part partaking in the festivities? And it doesn't seem to be. Hmm. It's not like an active guard duty or um, soldiers, town guard, nothing like that. It's just a ball. Perhaps right now we will speak to Prospero. Do we interrupt this? Absolutely. I do not care if we are interrupting his dance. There are more pressing matters. That is true. So I'm going to make my way with my Manitar by my side. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go out into the middle of the floor. There's dancing going around. He's not the only one out there. There's other couples that are dancing. Yeah. But most people are watching him. You guys dance. Satan and you're room. going to uh, try to interrupt? Yep. I'm going to go up. He just kind of holds his hand out like to stop you as they're continuing. Prospero, and I'm, I'll be vocal about it. You have a lot of problems tonight. He looks towards you. He continues on, but he looks at you. At this point, you're actually walking in to the other side of the ballroom because they went out to the courtyard. He looks at you. Kind of just holds up his finger. I believe you would want to know about this right away. And I'll try to persuade him. Oh, your persuasion. Mm. What is it? Uh, persuasion plus five. 18, five, 23. He spins her off his arm and he holds out his hand. I'll lead. Dance, elephant man, dance. <laughs> you feel awkward. You're put into this position, but people are looking at you. <sighs> Fuck you, Ryan. I take his hand. I just, take his hand. Just swing your trunk around to his ear and whisper in his yeah, ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He grabs your hand. He pulls you close to dance. You are now in a waltz. What is your dexterity? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Do you have performance? No. My dex, though, if it was a save, it would be plus two. Okay. I mean, he's leading you, so you're just kind of following him. You're pretty clumsy. You aren't sure exactly the uh, dance that he's doing, but it's not hard to follow, and he seems to be moving a lot slower than he was with the woman in the cat mask. And he uh, is close to you. He goes, What is the problem? Prospero. Yes. I am a knight of the Order of the Rose, yes. if you did not know. I did. Right now, I'd like to be joining you and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to report back to my princess great news of tonight's events. 
But unfortunately, there was an attack. An attack? On, on your land. In my land? In your courtyard. On who? It was a woman. How? It was out in the courtyard. By some kind of... What was it called? It was a ghast. Ghast. Like, it was a ghast out in the courtyard. It was a ghast. A ghast? He's a ghast. That I was a ghast. ghast. I'm a ghast. This is no time He's for ghast. jokes. Can we kill him? It's like, I wasn't joking. What is going on here? I'm, I'm befuddled. What? Hmm. Try not to create a panic. I would not want to see people trampled over each other. There's too many people in this room as it is. We must evacuate the premises. Let me... I'll be right back. He turns around. What are you guys doing? They're dancing in the middle. Prospero breaks off and he kind of uh, moves towards the crowd, moves towards... Do I see see Appian across the room when I turn around? You do. Uh, I'll just go like this. Seeing you. And I'll point at and I'll point at him when I. So you turn around, you see Appian, you give him the. Uh, I'm looking at you, looking at. I'm, Prospero. Yeah, Prospero. I'm like I'm trying to. Oh, you know so you're I'm doing saying. the. You know what I'm trying to say. Watch him. Mm-hmm. You do that. You turn around, and Prospero is mixed into the crowd already. Another dance, another song. People start crowding into the middle of the room. There's a lot of activity going on and chaos. A controlled chaos. But you don't see Prospero. You saw him go into the crowd and lost him immediately. He was headed towards the back. I will look around and see what all I see. If I see like the, uh, I saw him dancing with the cat. I saw... The squirrel, as we were walking by once, uh, looking for the... All different sorts of masks and animals, a lot of familiar faces. More so looking to see if I... Or somebody that I don't recognize... Or someone that I... uh, Missed? Am currently missing. Like, if I'm like, where is the... Like I said, because you guys have a higher wisdom and a lower intelligence, Mm -hmm. you're not really sure of all the masks. There's a huge stack of them. There could be someone missing, maybe. Maybe they're... Getting their fortune told. Maybe they're getting lucky. Yeah. I'm just looking around being like... And technically, the ox? you did not see Appian, by the way. But you did lose Prospero. Hmm. Hmm. No one saw Appian. Because Appian came in with a deer mask? He switched back to his deer mask. He did switch back. Did you switch back? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were still in the lizard mask. No, but uh, in case what's her name was following me, okay. I wanted to not have her. I'm so going to. Anything. I am going to cast detect magic in here. Okay. Do I see anything? You cast detect magic. Um, no one really even notices what you're doing or why you're doing it. Everyone's face lights up. Everybody's face lights up? Everybody's face lights up. But not their face. you right. you right, right, right. Mm. I take mine off. It's definitely magical. I it take... does have... It has... What mask did you get? Owl. Owl. It has divination magic on it. Mm. Very interesting. Cleave. Yes. You would have to spend an hour with it to know what it does. It's actually been close to an hour. Right. So I'll just take it off and I'm holding on to it, trying to figure it out. But I'm... uh, Cleave, let's go join Appian. Yes. You guys meet up kind of on the sides of the dance. Why did you take your mask off? Appian, Cleave. Mm-hmm. These masks are enchanted. I suspect it's divination. Right. 
Um, what mask are you wearing? Uh, the boar. The boar? I am boring at the moment. His is transmutation. And the deer is also different. His is enchantment. Yours is enchanted. That's what you just said. (laughs) Yours. And lots of people's masks are different. They're all magic, but they have a different aura to them. Each mask in here is different. Give me a perception. Oh boy. (laughs) I rolled a two, so. Okay. Should we take ours off as well? I would highly suggest you take your mask off. I'm not hiding anything anywhere. I don't know if I'm. I step behind a curtain. Put back the lizard mask. <laughs> Green cloak, lizard mask. And I step out. <clears throat> no one even notices because there's so much activity in here. He's now wearing the green lizard mask. Hmm. Um, it's also magical. Is it, but it was his, right? He this got it the from birds. the that corpse. Guy. That That mask is also enchanted. Indeed. But... I cannot just go about unmasked. There is no need to keep this secret any longer. There is, there was indeed. An, there was attack. There was an attack out in the courtyard. Another what? It was Another. a ghast. Yes, the bird first. Mm. Now a ghast. And I met one who was summoning a demon to kill me. How would they even know? I do not know. I suspect our host is up to some foul play. Is that a bird joke, owl man? (laughs) (laughs) It was a fun joke. Maybe. No, it was. (laughs) (laughs) No. I'm beginning to suspect that what was once a mission to infiltrate and understand will soon just be a way to see if we can escape with our lives. Do we just... (laughs) 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 Yeah. Um, We can leave. But something bad will happen tonight. Mm-hmm. Yes. I do have concern about the one who wishes me dead. Epin, if you feel unsafe here, we can leave. No, what of all these no. people? I think we should go push her into a lake. Push who into a lake? The one summoning a demon to kill me. Are you not listening? <laughs> Excuse me, yes, let's push her into a lake. Okay. Would you like me to show you where she is? <laughs> Does she look like she could swim? Uh, not once we break all of her arms and legs. <laughs> Wait, we're good guys, right? Yeah. Ish. <laughs> this one is a devil. A devil woman. One of the uh, tiefling. Summoning take- a murderous demon to kill me! Not just anybody, but me! The cat lady passes by you and gently rubs your arm as she passes by. Do you recognize you? You're wearing a wearing the, the green one mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Was it the same cat Same thing? cat lady. You can't tell if she knows who you are or not. Yeah. That one is frisky kitty. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Uh, let's have that be the last one. <laughs> it could escalate real quick from here. <laughs> right there in front of everybody. <laughs> Give me a perception check. Not everyone. Hmm. I rolled another two. <laughs> there you go. Now your luck has returned cool. to normal. Where are you guys going? Yeah, right. You're going to go back? Where did uh, the one that passed by... Did- she like she raised, raised his shoulder with her hand. 
Can I look and see if she like left anything? She chalked me. Yeah, did she rub something <laughs> on his? No. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what an odd <laughs> movement. <laughs> Many like to touch. <laughs> Gotta stop, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> now, lead the way up. Quick, come with me. Uh, that door. Okay, so right. we go. You all head back out towards the front chamber. It's pretty much empty. There's just a couple guys there standing there. Um, passive perception? 17. Oh, 14. 14. 13. Sorry. Uh, 13's enough. Doesn't matter for you. Oh, 14. Because you. you have detect magic going. Mm-hmm. You see they're um, just chatting about the day, holding their wine glass. It is also projecting an aura. The wine. This is also enchanted. With and some it is enchantment. It's a good thing I did not drink at the beginning of this session. What? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's... Mm, no, I suppose that's unusual. Do you think maybe that everyone who has drank tonight might have sleepy tendencies similar to what you had? That's. I believe I felt exhausted because I was bit by the ghast. Wine does make me sleepy, though. Mm-hmm. That's why I did not have any. You go to the door. It's still unlocked. <laughs> the two guys that are just talking there, they kind of look at you, but they don't <laughs> pay you much mind. No. They think it's a little weird that three guys are going into that room, because we know what happens when people <laughs> go into that room. As we go in, you're just like... <laughs> <laughs> I nod my head and I say, come. Oh. He just smiles and lifts his glass. <laughs> and then I start tiptoeing like this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> wow, that was strangely offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a fop. Remember the fops back in the day? Remember the fops with the white painted face? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right, mm-hmm. right ever. Okay. Uh, now, and then, come this way. <laughs> you, the lion on the tapestry. It doesn't matter at all. And I lift it up, and I press on the door. It pops open. Secret entrance. Secret entrance. And it goes down a few steps to one sub-level, through some halls. A lot of the hallway is um, made out of just solid stone. Um... You pass by the room. I equip my shield. You equip your shield. Good job. Mm-hmm. Pass by the room. The drawing still on the ground is there, but the woman, the devil, is not. Is the drawing completed? It looks like it was pretty much almost complete, and it's left as it was in its state. So you were convincing I go shuffle on it with my feet. <laughs> Scratch it out. No yeah. summoning here. Yeah, no, no, no. You start over if you need to pull that off. And you could continue through the halls if you want. I could um, put all this away. Trying to be stealthy. You're trying to be stealthy? Go ahead and everyone give me a stealth roll. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got a plate disadvantage or anything? Disadvantage, disadvantage, yes. disadvantage. Oh, for half plate? Yep. Oh. Disadvantage. Well, I rolled a one, so I don't know if I need to roll oh. a disadvantage. Okay, yes. well, I uh, <laughs> we all fail. What'd you roll? I had six. <laughs> yeah, you're not stealthy. What's stealth to you, guys? <laughs> we're not. We're never stealthy. Mm, we're we, never a stealthy group. <laughs> well, maybe when you Ever. play the all rogue campaign, you'll be stealthy. Yeah, that's the only. thing I had a plus be. five to stealth, and I still rolled a one. So no, no, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pull this. Is there any back. more coffee in that craft? Sure is. There's one less. Uh, Does anybody need more it? before I take some? You're not going to finish it. In this room, there's a bunch of candles set up on different uh, sized benches. It doesn't look like there's much 
going on in there, except for the ritual that you scratch out. Mm. Uh, it's been an hour for you two. Yes. You are attuned to the mask. Oh, even though we took it off? Yep. Oh. Just uh, holding it, attuning to it, knowing what it does, having it on you. So, hmm. Boar, you have disadvantage to charisma. Checks. Everything. But you have plus one to intimidation. Hmm. So you get a plus one, but at disadvantage. Once a day, you can consume poison with no ill effect. Hmm. You have plus one to investigation. Hmm. And you have disadvantage on con checks. Ugh. Once a day, you can immediately determine an enemy's weakness. Okay. You attune to the reptile. Reptile or and or deer? It was switching between them. Does it matter? No. Nope. Get both. You can attune to both. Actually, one at a time, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. So let's say a reptile. I guess I, I grabbed the reptile from the bird first, so. Um, you have disadvantage on strength. Once a day, you can detect the presence and location of a spellcaster of any alignment. Detect spellcaster. And you have a plus one to Arcana. Um, I gotta write this down. What did you? Shit. You have plus one to investigation. Just that. And that's disadvantage to con checks. Con concentration checks. No nope, constitution checks. Con well, that sucks. Not saves <laughs> checks. There's constitution checks. Yeah, so you push yourself too hard, I'll make you roll a con check. Uh, Breathing underwater might make you make a con check. If you're exerting yourself. Plus one. You get past this room over here. Hallway, tease off. What a tease! You could kind of see the shadows going to each side, so you know it's not a dead end on both sides. But it is a dead end where it doesn't go further. You're not going stealthily, but you you see some flickering light coming from the right side. Nothing on the left. Would you like me to go first? Always. There is a possibility. Deception may be our friend. This one seeks my death. I could pretend to have succeeded. Would you like to go first then? No, not really. I understand, Appian. We'll follow your lead. No, I'll follow his lead, I think. <laughs> you go first? <laughs> yeah, I'll go first. You go up and around the corner, and the flickering light is from a sconce torch in the wall. It's recently lit. And there's a row of torches that go down this length of this hallway. At the end of the hallway, you see a staircase. It goes up, it goes down. Fucking hell. Uh, back in the other direction where it was dark, is there anything in that direction? Back this way? That's where you uh, came from. No, that way? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple doors that are closed at the end of the hall, and then it uh, ends again, so it would be like this, and then a door on each side, which is closed. Hmm. We have doors. Is there anything that you feel we should check on this? Mm, they went this way. 
Okay. I will go down the Oops, stairs. Sorry. Down the stairs. Down the stairs. You do see some flickering light from up and down, uh, bouncing off the shadows of the insides of this uh, staircase. And you can see all the way down the center of the staircase, because they go like this, and they're built on the uh, inside of the cylinder. So there's a column of void all the way down the middle. That's what she has. Nobody. Nope. Nobody. Nobody's 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 right there. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're a column there. void in the center. Are you telling me to avoid the center? That is obvious. <laughs> Here, but you do see the door right there, also closed. There's a couple tables in the middle. Let me get some stuff. Does it not seem strange to you that one could be attacked in a courtyard and another Woman is summoning demons at this party, and no one seems at all concerned. They just go on with their decadence. It is a very strange party, indeed. I will say, if anyone has the ability to heal me, I am down. <laughs> Wait a second. I'll I'll, uh, I'll cure wounds you. Does, I, that, does that work? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my mask's once a day ability to attempt to detect that what's her name devil mm -hmm. okay i'll use a and i'm secretly second hoping level slot. she's upstairs so two <laughs> we go that way instead why because i set all this up yeah oh that's You're a dick. <laughs> 10 <laughs> 12. No. you do okay. you use that ability She's in the next room over there. She is here. You come down the stairs here. This is where the staircase ends. First, Cleave. You're now in the room. Mm -hmm. and then I'm guessing Ryzen. And then Appium. Mm -hmm. Like that? Does that sound about Just right? Just like sure. this. So, what are you doing? <clears throat> I'm gonna investigate the room. All right. She is behind the door. She's behind the door. Directly behind it? A three. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying things. <laughs> You're terrible. Walls on each side. Great. There's I know where the walls are. over there. Um, pillars. There's probably another room over there. You can't see past the pillars back that way. So let's see. You can see almost to the end. Um, it's dark down here. There is a torch light right here and right here that are flickering. And you can see the flickering coming from the stairwell. <laughs> they go, uh, the camera hates it when your hand goes by the light. Yeah. <laughs> What well, is the a game plan? Appian, do we go through the doorway? Yes, of course. We must, at all costs, stop the one who wishes to harm me. This is true. Cleave. Please. Is she directly behind the door? No. When you used it, no. I have detect magic on still. Okay. Well, you see, like, some uh, faint auras coming from the far table. Far table? Far I'll go table? over there. <laughs> far table. Who's going first? You or you? Cleave always goes first. Yeah, I'll go first. Are you going straight to the door? 
Yeah, I'm going to go to the door. Okay, you can make it in the round. Okay. It is closed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait for him to get behind me. Okay. Are you trying to go quietly? Yes. Roll your stealth. Disadvantage. How about you? I have a speed of 35, so I will be up next to... 25, 30? Um, one closer this way. And 35. that should be back, yeah, so that I'm not in the direct path. Of so while I'm by this table, I, do, I put detect magic on. What do I see? Yep, so you still have detect magic going. You see um, a sword that's lighting up with some kind of um, aura of magic. If you spend an action, which you still have an action, mm-hmm. you can further attuned to what kind of spell it is. Okay, so I'll spend a... Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, it's evocation. Evocation? Can I pick it up? The sword? Yeah. You can absolutely pick it up. Why is someone picking it up? Pick it up. It's obviously magical. It's perfectly balanced. It feels good in your hand. It is a long sword. Mm. You have your shield in one hand and this sword in this hand. I'll trade swords, because I'm sure I'll probably have to attune to it or something like that. So I'll sheathe the magic one I just picked up, okay. and I'll... It slips right into the sheath. Shink. And I'll take out my sword then. Okay. I'm ready for battle. Roll your stealth. What did you roll? Uh, I rolled a natural 20 and a 9. So the so 9. Plus 5, so 14. 14. What did you roll for stealth? Hey, 18 plus. Mm, 13? 13. 18 plus 3, 21. You hear the murmuring of a voice behind the door, but it's speaking in some kind of language that you can't understand. Well, unless you can understand infernal, anyone. Mm, no. It's speaking in some kind of devilish language, obviously. Because there's a devil behind there. Go down. Take the shit down. I rage. <laughs> and you kick rage. open the door. You equip your shield. Yep. You right. kick the door down. I, I'm going to um, shift into fly swarm form. What's that? Or whatever. What do you mean? And I'm going to use my wild shape spore version to just become bustling with a swarm all over me. So the bees are flying out of my robes and everything. Oh. And just just like I was doing before. He's a bee guy, dude. I'm a bee, bee guy. guy. Yeah. It gives me a bunch of temp Actually. hit points. I get extra D6 Beware. either <laughs> they're crying <laughs> or poison. Okay. Circle of spores thing. You kick the door down. We'll just move the door for the sake of the camera. Move in go. here. You see more tables lined up. There's chairs around them, but they've been converted from table to table um, to uh, like a hospital bed where there's bodies laying on them, and the bodies have all undergone some kind of transformation, some kind of difference going human to part animal, some kind of feral thing. And each of them (laughs) has a mask over their face, a different kind of animal, and they're completely out, uh, unconscious. I don't think I have one of her, but I'll use this guy. standing by one of them but you also see a creature that's been turned completely feral as you walk in yes and i won't bother putting bodies on the uh makeshift laboratory hospital bed you kick the door in it comes right off the hinges. Roll your initiative. 
They are surprised you guys did it. It's amazing. We did it. I don't know how that works. I can't believe you guys actually did it. We surprised someone. All right. Are you keeping track of initiatives? Oh, sure. I can. Uh, let's see. Show some initiative, lad. And let's go ahead and put on some battle music. Bum, 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 bum. The Order of the Rose. We're Order always just fighting. of the Rose. Let's see. You got it. Nine. Nine. Seven, nine, ten. We need eight. Wow. That's so, uh, so I did you mark me down? I have a seven. Yep. Okay. Seven for her or the uh, for her. Okay. Who rolled the seven? Me. She rolled a sixteen flat. Oh, for roll off. Sorry, Eight. 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 So mm. she'll go first. She'll, she'll go up to an eight then. And then this fully feral creature does anyone have who I would say nature or arcana mm, I have a uh, Have a plus two to Arcana, but not not trained in it. Not trained in it, unless that mask makes me trained as well. It gave me a plus, mm. an extra plus one. You know what? You got the mask. I'll let you roll. Arcana. Ah, six. Six. There we go. Cool. Now we're back to where we belong. <laughs> cool. cool. It looks like a humanoid wolf. What creature. did the humanoid wolf get for? Surprised, but rolled 20 total. Damn. Okay. He's at the top. Yep, so he'll clear surprise right away. So, they clear their surprise. She turns around. She looks at you. The Order of the Rose! Kill them! She doesn't see you. (laughs) I'm around the corner. Who's first of you guys? They're uh, all surprised. The first one of us is Brian. Appian. Appian. Mm, all right. So, um... You can't see in, but you heard her scream. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, bitch! Um, <laughs> so, I'm gonna come bouncing in. So, you're gonna go in. I'm gonna go in. And I'm gonna cast... Shalele. So one, two, three gets you in. You're Six. facing right at her. You look to the left, and now you see the feral creature. Yep, that's disappointing. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty terrifying. It's standing about 6'9". It's fully feral. It's kind of hunched over. It has these really um, tense muscles as it's now looking ready to rush, to lunge, to charge. It's snarling. You see the drool, like, dripping off its teeth. All right. So I'm going to, using my staff of swarming insects, I'm going to go flying in and cast the chalele on it and then take a big old crack at this devil. I say, I be in sense as regards. <laughs> Do it. 14? 14 to hit. Oh, I gotta make sure to. I'll tell you in a second. <sighs> Cursed dice. <clears throat> okay. I just wanna put everything together so I can flip back and forth. Miss. You just slam right into her body, and it slams off her hard, leathery, deviled skin. Oh, he's, he's so hard. He leathery. smiles. And, uh... I should have known it was you. 
Yes, you should have. <laughs> do you have anything else you can do? Uh, I'm going to... You can still move, so that was four. One, two, three, four. So, um, but if you move anymore, you'd provoke unless you move around her, and she's kind of shoved between these two tables, so you might be able to jump up onto a table. It's difficult terrain, but it would be a little athletics. If you're not mm. trained, you'd roll. If you are trained, you can do it easily. I have disadvantage on strength checks. Oh, well, do you want to actually roll? You don't have to. I might as well get up on top of that bed on this far side, away right. from the dog man. Um, 11. 11? Yeah, that's enough to jump up and on the table. <laughs> so you're now on the other side of her. Yep. Right there. Right next to that. You're other kind bird. of standing over her with your staff as you just slapped it off of her. Mm -hmm. Crack. <clears throat> and that is so. the end of my turn for the moment. Yep. And it's a uh, map. I'll go in. I'll go barreling in at her. So straight at her. You also see. Here, you walked in one, Alex. <laughs> as you kicked the door in. Well, actually, you just kicked the door, right? Yeah. So you didn't actually see yet. He comes barreling past you into the room up against this uh, she devil. She devil. What do you do for a battle charge? Can you sound like an elephant? You blare? <laughs> <laughs> this is like the most deflated battle charge yeah. ever. Uh, that inspires. <laughs> <laughs> Malays. You do not do Dumbo proud. <laughs> yeah. Dumbo disowned you. Right? So. Big elephants on parade. Here they come. Hippity hoppity. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Loxodon. Kaba! Kaba! <laughs> Roll the hit. Kaba! Kaba! Um, um, I did. Just so you know. You can still transfer your hunter's oh, okay. mark. So bonus action on her. Uh, hunter mark. And I got um, a 12 and a 17. One miss, one hit. Okay. So the first time you swing at her and she definitely steps out of the way, then you slam against her with your sword. Uh, and then that's plus 7, so... Um, 12. 12 damage. Okay. I need a favor. Over there should be a pen or a pencil, maybe under in the shelf. There we go, that's it. Thank you. A pen or a pencil. I use most of my resources already. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Used all your resources? No, most of them, though. I got a first and second spell slot left, so... You didn't have much to start with in the first place. So. Yeah. Okay, next. Did not manage them well, though. Uh, let's see, after Matt would be her clearing surprise. <gasps> Ooh, well... So uh, that's her, because they already cleared surprise. Yeah. Well, she had she rolled an eight. Oh, so okay. we just got to her. So she, she just cleared surprise. Wolfman cleared surprise. Okay. Wolfman cleared surprise. That's so she goes last. And she last. starts her yeah. turn there. Well, you go last. I go last. She gets a con saving throw, DC of 15. Con saving throw because you're standing next to her? Mm-hmm. She does not make it. Yeah. So she takes a D6 of necrotics. Really? Just because? Just because I use my Halo of Spores reaction when she starts hers and takes five necrotic stinging and biting. Got oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> the death bees. Mm hmm Okay. Next. Yeah. Then it would be me. Go. Uh, so I step in. Uh -huh. It looks crowded around her, so I look over to my left and see that beast and go, Yes, you are my type. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it just snarls fairly. It I doesn't raging. actually. Um, you find you, you finally found your dance partner at the I ball. did. Let's see how this goes. Yours. <laughs> that was amazing, by the way. 
that you danced with it. God, I hated it. I hated it every <laughs> the second. The big elephant. Uh, twice reckless. Barbarian things. Natural oh! 20. You hit. Uh, so my weapon does extra damage when I do a crit. Nice. So it oh is... Oh, God, just kill it. <laughs> uh, let's see. 7 plus 6 is 13 plus my... Roll the damage twice plus another, right? Oh, right, because I double all the dice. Double all the dice. Yep, so that is a... 5 doubled is 10. Mm-hmm. Roll the dice again. Oh, oh you're just going to double it. Oh, yeah, I was just going to double it. And then the crit gives you just extra, extra seven. damage? Yep, oh, okay. so it's 6 plus 7 plus 10. So it would be 23. 23 damage for the first hit. Okay. 23. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, oh, it's a good. 23 Damn. to hit. That is also a hit. And that is uh, nine damage. Okay. So then we are at the uh, the wolf guy. Wolf guy. My wolf turn. Wolf guy. Wolf guy. It seems like it's fairly frenzy. It doesn't actually... Um, seem to have much humanoid intelligence. It's just acting on instinct and rage. And it lashes out at you. At advantage. With advantage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So first bite. With a... Nineteen. That hits. So first the bite... I need to figure out my dice here. There's my D8. You found your date. <laughs> Eight for the bite. So four. Damage. So four. Okay. Roll con save. <laughs> you have disadvantage. Oh, Wait, dis- you have disadvantage. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, I am not within 10 feet of the paladin? Yes. No, you are not. Yes, no, you are. So that is a 10. 10. That's a fail. Mark it down. Failed. Con save. It now claws you twice. 15? Uh, 15 does not hit. 20. 20 does hit. Snake guys. Take five slashing damage. So two. Who's first in the party order? Uh, first in party order is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some shout outs while we wait for Brian. Did we do shout outs? Uh, I forgot to do shout outs, didn't I? No. Ryan just kind of left. (laughs) We'll be right back. (laughs) Mid-combat. Well, first we can shout out our YouTube channel. If you want to watch um, more of the uh, other sessions, you can find us on YouTube. But also if you like the music in the background, then you can go to our YouTube channel and they have, I think I have about 21 playlists now of different types of settings. So combat, combat boss, combat victory... And then I have like some social playlists. You can find all that. On all commercial channel. free. All commercial free. All equalized in volume. So that's a big selling point for a lot of people. If you're trying to run a game, you don't want blaring loud and then very quiet. You want it all to stay about the same. But let's go ahead and give some shout outs to our followers. So we got Stromblongst. And Dragon Demic, Hashi Kills, Squad J Brony, Squad Jabroni, and Andrew C. Thank you everyone for your follows. Thanks for tuning in. Now Brian's back, so it's your turn, by the way. <laughs> I thought I could do it, but go pee before. Nope, you did I'm not sure. do it. That's alright though. Ow! We forgive you. 
No, oh, good. So just offer a blood sacrifice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Get a pier- piercing over there. Mm. Okay. Right below the ear. <laughs> hmm. What you doing? So from it, it appears that she's still right there. So I will once again cast the shillelagh to turn my thing into extra badass damagery. Okay. Did our luck just run out? Yeah. What happens? I well, I just well, I rolled a three, so. Oh. Well, that's not I, bad. I just missed. Um, yeah, it is. That's not that bad. I swing. Well, how about, uh, do I have enough, maybe as a, I don't know what kind of action it would take, to lean down and take the mask off the one that I'm standing over um, after a miss? That'd be an act. Well, yeah, that'd probably be an act. Well, can you do that with movement? You could probably do that with movement. But I need you to roll me a strength check. It stretches against a pretty strong band. These are the ones you put around your head to make sure they stayed in place. Snap it, man. Just do it. His his head, you can tell it's a guy, um, was a guy, half feral. Get disadvantage on everything. Which ruins everything. (laughs) Five. You pull it back and slap. It snaps back. Six. Yeah. Yeah, so I wake him up. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, there's no reaction from him. Oh. Fair enough. Next? Uh, next is Matt. Ryzen, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. That's I, why I asked you. Um, I'm going to say that's uh 10. 10 is a miss. And then that's uh 23. That is a hit. Okay. Um... I'm going to use my... No, I'm just going to roll regular this one. Okay. But it's a hunter's mark. Actually, I'm going to do... I No. Nope. doesn't matter. Four and seven is 11. 11 damage. Next. Do you want to move? Do you want to use a bonus action? Did you attack twice? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Okay. You, right? Yep. Cleave. Oh, no. It's uh, her first. Oh, her. She gets her first. She starts to turn and make a con save. Yeah. She's not happy with you. She does not make it. Four more. Well done. That's how much damage she would get hit from getting hit that by that dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kunk. Kang. All right. She's trying to debate if she gets uh, right. If she's trying to uh, <laughs> let herself be double teamed, or if she's. Uh, hey, oh. I was just trying to get back at Ryan for snapping at me a couple weeks in a row. Make a wisdom save. I'm not good at this one. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. She looks towards him. She says, "Oh no, kill." Appian first! And you turn around. Oh, God. You wield your axe. Oh, fuck. Not our barbarian. Yep, I'm after her. Not not the barbarian. (laughs) Go ahead. So I'm supposed to kill Appian? Kill Appian first. Okay, so I would have to move. Oh, yeah. Uh, so does he take a swipe at me when I... He actually will. He'll take a Just swipe Just for funsies. And well, because he's frenzied and rage. Does that mm-hmm. damage give you a chance? I think so. He hits you. Nice. Four. With a claw, four. Seven. <laughs> so three? Three. Do I make a new save? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> That'd been awesome. Okay. So I go up to Happy and then... Actually, let me check. How, what do you move? How much do you move? 
Well, actually, it depends if... Uh, you know what? You can make a saving throw. Yes. <laughs> nope. That's a two. Nope. Kill Appian first. <laughs> okay, how much do you move? 40. All right, so we're going to go 5, 10, You heard 15, this. 20, you can take an opportunity tag if you want. I'm probably moving 25. around. Oh, actually, yeah, you're moving around him. 30. <laughs> you're just like, I'm going to dance around this guy. Wow. Okay. Do you want it? I guess he's right. Is that close enough to... Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay. Now, I don't know what the failed con save does. Am I poisoned? Am I... Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay, so it's not going to have an impact if... No. Okay. Well, I am trying to take people down, so I'm doing reckless, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. That is a 24 to hit. Are you trying to kill the Order of the Rose? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's you, trying to kill the Order of the you. Rose. Uh, for Jesus. Damage. So, uh, that is... Um, so I've got... You uh, have temporary hit points? 14 yeah. plus 2 is 16 damage. And then again. Then my second attack is luckily a 19, not a 20. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Still hit. Yep. For... Let's see. Nine more damage. God, how are you looking, dude? <laughs> my max HP is 39. I am at 38. He has 10 pit points. I had, uh, but, uh, okay. had okay. 24 temp. Good. Uh, okay. after That's part me, of the spore druid. Mm -hmm. After me would be the wolf guy. The wolf goes towards the nearest enemy. Straight in. And Even it starts to it? bite. Oh, yeah. Gosh. It's feral. <laughs> That's why I hit you in the first place. It's just going after the first thing it sees. Which is me? Ah! The hell right, just happened? That was a miss. I threw my <laughs> die. Because you realized that you weren't doing it at advantage? Yeah. Because he doesn't anything. roll advantage against uh, Ryzen. The second one is a miss. So it bites. doesn't even hit you. It claws and scrapes off your armor. And then... Misses its third attack as well. It's just uh, frenzying across your back as it goes. Then is uh, it's you, Brian. It would be, except that creature right there next Where? to. <laughs> There's no creature right there. Now you're just making shit up just to make it up. There were bodies on the. Uh, they all had a different mask. This one is lizard-like. Oh. It raises up. And it is also going to attack you. It looks like it is mostly feral. There is a body on that table and a body on that table, and Appian's kind of straddling a body. As Appian Yay! Does. <laughs> Yay! So, ironically, it'll be the second one you've straddled today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can find this. <sighs> it's all right, man. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm yeah, just trying to mortally wound you. Yeah, right. I'm just looking at the time as well. What time do you got to go? Well, game starts at noon. So, got to leave at noon? S Soon-ish, hopefully. I mean, I'd like to watch it since it's the last game for the Vikings. They're not going to go on. That sucks. This day sucks. Ryan, you're going to kill me and the Vikings are going to lose. This is going to be horrible. You love it. I'm going to... First thing I'm going to do in my action is take a dump on your stupid little devil person. Second thing I'm going to do is use my bonus action to piss on right, your little lizard guy. So it goes to bite. <laughs> it would be an action to piss on a lizard guy. It misses. I have two actions. And then. it also <laughs> claws twice. That is a hit at 20? Yeah. And then 15 is not a hit. So it claws you once. Go ahead and make a con save. Disadvantage at that. And that will probably be it. Uh, I rolled a... Uh, 10 all together. 10. So take four, 4 piercing damage. 
And a 10 is not enough. So, just mark it down that you failed. I'll just remember that I failed. I'm not going to mark it down. <laughs> Fuck you and your goddamn failing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Dude, you don't write that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> what so are you, you doing, kind Alex? of interrupted the flow. I think that makes it Ryzen's turn, correct? Uh, so the wolves went, Brian went. Did, Did Brian go? go? No. Okay, so Brian, yeah, Ryzen. I said Ryan, and then before... Go ahead, Brian. Happy uh, All right. Um, so covered in wasps and whatnot, I'm going to hold out my staff and push five of them out, and slam the staff down, and turn them into giant wasps. <laughs> And they fill the area. Do they each attack individually? Technically, yes. Okay. Where do they go? Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. They... Let's see. They act on your turn each round. So go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Arcana? Arcana. 18. 18's enough. You can definitely tell your friend's under an enchantment spell. He is um, obviously trying to kill you. Okay. Yeah, I want. But you you can see that each time he's taking damage, it is kind of like Wait making him wince, making him think about it. Yeah. There's um, some semblance of I mean, these are him. From just kind of my general aura, so they're going to be close to me, and I want to make them, you know, fill in as close as possible over here. Yeah, I'm not going to pull out five fly minis because it'll just crowd the table. Uh huh. <laughs> but there's five wasps now, mm -hmm. and five giant wasps. So then what I do. Do they attack? Well, I don't. It's going to be. Each creature obeys your verbal commands, and in combat, they act on your turn each round. Okay. Resolves their... DM can resolve their actions and movement. So they're acting on your turn. What yeah. do they do? Um, I'm going to make three of them attack that uh, crazy demon lady. Okay. And two of them are going to sting you, one in each eye. They have an advantage on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so roll the hit. All right, so... Go first. One, two, three. So, so, her first. So, her first. And these guys have... Let's see if I can figure out what... Giant Wasp. They have plus... Four to hit. Um, so... Fifteen is the highest? Fifteen is a hit. Okay. Um, Nothing else will hit. Okay. So one hit, and that does a D6 plus two poison damage. Wait a second. Oh, wait. No, one D6 plus two piercing damage. So seven piercing and three D6 poison. What? Four plus five plus four. So, oh, yes. nine, 13 poison damage. The target must make a DC 11 constitution saving throw, taking the poison damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. So, what was the regular damage? Uh, seven. Seven. Okay. And then the poison was 13. 13. And she If she a, fails, the DC 11. If she fails. She I fails. believe so. She fails. Nice. So, she takes 11 poison damage. Okay. Oh, 13. 13. Yeah. Uh, and then they both get advantage on you? Yep, because I did a reckless against you. <laughs> he loves hitting his friends. 17 that plus is. 4. Yep, a whole bunch. And 19 plus 4. That nice. Is. Okay. I'm glad my dice are working well. For yeah, those you. are great. <laughs> <laughs> Not my own. You just need to steal so, D6 plus 2. So take 4 piercing in the so one eye. 2. And we're going to do... Four piercing in the other eye. And then roll another a con two. save. And then, yeah, roll. Oh. So six, seven, eight, nine for the first one. Do I take that if, uh, if I succeed? If you succeed, you take half. Okay, so 
Natural 20 for the first one. one. Yeah. That was how much? Six. Four, so eleven. nine. Take four. And then half again. So two. Because you're raging. Yep. Oh, yeah. Six, 12, 13. This would be the one to succeed on. That's 14. What's the save? 11. I think I might actually make that still. Do you currently get the, his yeah, plus 12. two? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I got a twelve without it. Okay. So. Well, maybe not. Okay. Because so he's your. Six well, you know, he knows he's under he this saved. effect. Yeah, he, he saved. saved either way. But he so also knows that you're doing this. It was for twelve him. divided by two is six divided by two is three. Yep. All right, you're gonna make two more saves before you kill your friend for real. <laughs> hey. I'm pretty sure that'll do it. Uh, so 17. 17 plus higher the two. That's a wisdom save. I don't have a plus to it. So. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> so I save. You save. That was After his turn. <laughs> she loses that effect. She can feel it. All right. I'm she just going to focus. I'm just going to focus right on this devil lady because F her. I rolled a natural one and a four. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. That's why I brought peas into it, because I couldn't hit anything. I love Ryzen, but he sucks at this. No, you suck at this. <laughs> Get out of this room. You need to trump, man. So I don't I don't know what I do. Like Your battle just, call is deflated, yeah. so that's why <laughs> you're just... <laughs> So, Nice. I don't know what happens. I, I guess I drop my sword or something. You don't have to. You have disadvantage? No, oh, he rolled a one. I always he tell twice. you what oh, you what happens. Gotcha. It's not it doesn't have to have like a mechanical effect. Oh. It's like maybe you are deflated, maybe you missed and you feel really awful that you suck so bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens right now. <laughs> you remember uh, because an elephant never forgets. Yeah. I'll never forget this moment. And she is next. Oh, oh, she's next. Hey, make a con save. <laughs> God damn it. That's a 20. Well, then she only takes... Uh, is that all creatures or any creature you choose? Choose. Okay. Um, and... How far does it go? Just five feet? Let's see if I, I gotta... Make the other two do it. Uh, features traits... Um, well, it's as a reaction, so I only do it gotcha. one time. So, uh, la, 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 and it's one, man, fuck, this stupid app, <laughs> trying to find shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's one, all right. Uh, I rolled a three on the die. All right. So it's probably that, and then you probably take half of it. Okay, then it's probably one. one. Features and traits. So, it's her turn while you're looking that up. She's not dead yet, so she's going it's to... Under reactions, because mm. it has reactions at the bottom. That's good, though. Mm. Halo spores. 1d6 to a creature you can see when it moves into a space or starts its turn there. Okay. So it was a d6. So three. Um... She screams, I said kill it Doesn't take half. Yeah. And you see the creatures, the newly formed feral creature and the feral wolf creature. <sighs> Listen to her command. They both look at Appian. How, is, how do they know my name? I don't know. I'm wearing a mask. So However, like... she also make a wisdom save. This is going to be a problem. Fail. No, actually, I'll probably say from you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plus six in wisdom. Just an FYI. Yeah. Plus you I get don't... your ability, right? What'd you roll? Yeah. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> I said kill Appian. And you immediately feel the flaring, the rage, the inflicting pain on Appian, who has been a little bit sarcastic once or twice with you. You want to plant your sword into not, his guts. Not really, though. 
<laughs> Not really. But this is what you're thinking right now. Okay. All your rage is flaring to the top, and you want to kill Appian. All right. That was her turn, though. And she's going to... Well, she can't really move, because you're all crowding her. That was her turn. Okay, so after her is me. You. Uh, can I reach her with my axe? Yeah. I'll swing at her twice. All right. Reckless. Just kill her. Just kill her. So 17 to hit. Okay, that's a hit. And that again, that is uh, 19 plus 7, 26 to hit. That's a hit. So first hit. Uh, that's disappointing. Uh, <laughs> eight damage. Okay. Second one is. Ooh, that's better. Uh, Fifteen damage. You plant your axe into her chest, and you actually pierce through what little leather uh, armor she has, and you pierce into her skin. She's definitely past the bloody point. She's not down. She's screaming in a bloody rage. Does she have to make a concentration check? No. Okay. She doesn't do that. Okay. Uh, after me is top of the round with the wolf. The wolf. You can make an opportunity attack on the wolf. Um... I'm under her control. Oh, that's right. Does that count as... Actually, you can still make an opportunity attack because you are feral. All right. Uh, 20? 20 is a hit. Uh, that's plus 7, so 4 and 7 is 11. 11 damage to the werewolf. And it moves around to get at you. You can only make one opportunity attack. This one has to make an athletics check to get up there. But it's going to try to jump up onto the table and just slam its foot into the guy that you're straddling. And it does it. And it lands in claws first. <laughs> one of its legs uh, sinks claws into the man's face. The other leg has still got toes of a human. He hasn't fully transformed, but he's close to full transformation. Um, you have a high passive perception as you're being swarmed. You can just tell the other two guys on those two far tables, they're not even past the halfway point of transformation yet. Okay. They're still kind of unconscious. So hopefully you won't be dealing with them soon, because this is bad for you. And while I say all that, first the bite. Miss, claw, hit, claw. Miss. So you're going to take five damage from the wolf. Nope. Add three onto that. Eight total. And then the lizard like creature is also going to bite, swing, swing. Bite, hit. Claw, miss. You know, I have an 18 AC. Yeah, it rolled really good. Okay. And then natural one. So it goes to... Can it fall back off? Its foot slips off, and it's now straddling the table, kind of. It does, like, take part of the guy's cheek off with mm -hmm. him, though. It's kind of halfway on the table. So take... Eight... Piercing and roll a con save. And my ability saves. You have plus two because you're next to the paladin. It's good. 17. That's enough. So that was their turns, which brings it back to Brian. Jesus. Appian. Okay. You're uh, in a bad way. You're surrounded. Yep. I. You see the feral look in your friend's eye, 
One already hit you. He's back and he's snapped out of it. The other wants to hit you and he's looking straight at you and those creatures are just sinking their claws and teeth into your body. So where are the bees? Do you have have two on uh, (laughs) Barbarian and three around um, Chica? Okay. Um, So I'm going to... What I need to do first is... Uh, stone, stone floor and walls in here. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would like to. You're on a wooden table, stone floor and walls. I would like to hop down to here. That first. would be not disengaging from her. Correct. Okay. So she will actually attack you. Seems worth it. She. Just reaches out her claw to hit. Miss. <laughs> and you jump down. So I hop down. In and the middle of these two beasts. Then I cast... <laughs> Meld into stone. For one action. And I go into the ground. <laughs> Where I am safe. My five bees. <laughs> Face fuck the devil woman. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three of them first. Plus, these were... Man, I have to do so many things to stay ahead of this shit when they're all attacking me. Spells. Come on. You can be spells. Uh, actually. This one. Open up to giant wasps. So they have plus four to attack. So 20, 15, 19. Three hits. And makes three constitution saves. Um, 13, 40, 50, 60, 17, 17. 17. So five hits. This isn't over, she says, as her whole body. She takes five hits and she poofs? Yeah. Damn. Disappears into, um, you have religion, right? Mm-hmm. Into the abyss, or into the, um, nine hells. Okay. Into the inf- Probably the first layer of hell. When a devil dies on this plane, they go back to hell. And you did destroy her body. Yes. Pew, 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 pew. With bees. <laughs> <laughs> the swarm of bees. Um, Be um, gone. When you do that, the creatures just start lashing out at anything near them. Okay. I'm not there. That's right. But I don't think it's their turn quite yet anyways. Okay. Nope, after you is Matt. You want to kill Appian, but that fades. Your head is cleared. Appian sunk into the ground? You ever done that in front of him? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) Never done that in front of anyone before. (laughs) That's a a level six ability. (laughs) Poof. Poof. Her armor (laughs) lays on the ground. Ooh. Looking into his, it was very hard. Blow my trunk, and then I'm gonna slice off his legs. Slap him with your trunk, and trunk to the junk. Okay, so eight and five is what? Thirteen. Hit, hit. And a fifteen is whatever. Hit. All right, so two hits. Two hits. All right, I am going to use a second. Level um, smite. So what does that do again? It smites. Um, you roll an extra 2d8 plus one more. Right. So an extra 3d8. So 3d8 and, um, and I your days, did you bonus move? action to this guy. Okay. All right. Did you already hit? Yeah, he hit. Okay. All right. So that was big. Um, eight... Six is fourteen, plus five is nineteen, plus two is uh, what? Uh, twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. And then is that adding your strength modifier to? Oh, and then seven is twenty eight. Uh, it should be like a. It was. It's seven. It's oh, a it seven. Is seven? Yep. Because he has a plus two sword. Yeah. Oh, okay. Twenty eight. That's a big hit. And then, oh, and then this is 11 and 7 
is uh, 18. That's a hit. Oh, that was the second hit. 18 more damage. You bloody it in one shot. Good deal. It's not dead. But it's half dead. I mean, that's good, right? Yeah. Let's see. After Matt, it would have been her, but she's dead, so it's me. Uh, I'm going to move around to the space Appian is in. Mm-hmm. And Are you going to stand on him while he's melded into stone? Uh, yes, for now. Okay. Uh, and I will do two attacks. First one is 18 hit. Hit. Second one is 16 plus 7, so 23 to hit. Hit. Let's see, this is plus six. So 12 damage for the first one. Uh, 16 damage for the second one. And Finish it. Oh, that works. Uh, I was actually going to do uh, hammering the horns to, make, <laughs> to push them back. So I'm swinging and pushing with my horns at the same time. I pin them up against the uh, wall. You like that finishing move. Yep. <laughs> All right. Now, this last poor creature that's feral, we could go on through a couple more rounds, or we could just say you guys kill it. Bees, you two, you all yeah. swarm it, you sting it, you slice it, you dice it. You win the day, kind of. Now, we didn't get to the final part of this one shot. It stretched out a little, but I actually enjoyed it. It was fun and funny. And if we ever have to do another one shot, we could end there or start there. All with right. The, with the end of this intrigue with Prospero. I no will. Um, dealt with that part yet. However, before we end the game, let's take off the battle music. I will return from the floor. Okay. I kind of figured. Let's um let's talk about the last two. Now they're looking half transformed. They've each got their mask. One's mask has now melded into their face. It's become part of the form. Mm. You're all still wearing your masks. No, I I took mine off, dude. Oh, that's right. You took yeah, those two. We took, we took ours. You're off. still wearing your mask. Mm -hmm. It hasn't melded to your face yet. No. But you are attuned to it. Mm -hmm. You can't use your special abilities unless you wear it. Oh, that's all right, because I only got plus one advantage. You also um, can't drop it. If you try, you don't want to. Has my deer mask also attuned at this point? Sure. Just so as I know what it is. Um... So we don't have to wear it, but we have to keep it on us? You can't drop it. For some reason. Now I kind of understand why that person wouldn't let me trade the mask. Now you do. Mm -hmm. oh, I wonder if this is true also for those who do not wear the animal masks. It appears those who wear the planes. So the cat must be in on it. The cat wears a Wait, cat's no. mask. <laughs> there was one other that had... Yes. Okay. He's showing his true aid intelligence. <laughs> there was, there was uh, what's, the, what's the host name? Mike Pompeo? Ma Mad Prospero. Mag Prospero. Magnus Prospero. <laughs> Prospero Dave. Should I plant my axe in the one mascara. that held at his face? And take off the mask of the other one? You are able to take off the mask of the other one forcefully. When you rip it off, you rip skin off. It mm -hmm. was um, painful, it looks like. It looks like it injured him. And he's bleeding out of the eye, like the corner right there. Someone might want to fix that. And I go to plant my axe in the one that melted. <laughs> I'll lay him in my hands for five. Right. And that guy. So how many fresh corpses one. are there over here? Fresh corpses? One, oh. two? Two so far? Yeah. We had the two that got up, and then we had the one that I just ripped the mask off Three? of. And then I planted my axe survive? one. <laughs> the one he planted his axe into? No, that one I'm assuming not so much. So there were but four the tables, one, the mask one survived. 
Three corpses. Four tables. One survived. Three corpses. Is that including the one that had fully changed already? Yeah, the they dog fully man? changed, and when you killed them, they died in their form. I mean, the dog man that was already in the He's saying were there werewolf. four people, including Plus the, the dog man? Or was... At four or was this oh, werewolf I one of them? You're saying. Yeah, there was four plus one. Four oh, plus okay. one. So, so I guess there's, there's four corpses. Okay. <laughs> four zombies. Because <laughs> you can do four a day. Yep. Okay. That's not weird at all. Nope. I just send all the excess bugs into them and they rise. He raises rise! four corpses. Rise. They stand up. One of them looks like a lizard creature. One of them looks like a wolf creature. One of them is um, half chicken. <laughs> if you look really close, all of them are covered in little tiny flies that are flapping their wings furiously to lift them up. And you can do this weird puppet thing. The last one is... Well, let's pick one more What's animal. It? Lizard... Chicken? Chicken. <laughs> last one's rabbit. Lizard, chicken, rabbit, and what? Um, wolf? Wolf. But it's half rabbit and half chicken. They hadn't fully transformed. Yep. You now have some weird, weird, weird zombies. No. They, I... they follow the zombie template no matter what. Mm -hmm. One hit point. So when they get hit, you have to roll a d20. And depending on what you roll on the d20, they might or might not die. Okay. They're kind of like minions. They're my minions. Like in 4th edition minions. Mm -hmm. So I know how these masks work where I don't want to give them up now, right? Shoot. Am I, you understand I want to keep can't two of them. them. Would I be able to try to take the Loxodons and run out the door with it? You could work? try to steal it from him, but he doesn't want to get rid of it. So you had the second mask. Dear. Gives you disadvantage on con checks. Uh, wait, so I have disadvantage on strength and con because yeah. I'm attuned to both? Because it's a curse. <laughs> You're <laughs> wearing cursed masks. Oh. But you get plus one to insight, and once a day you can telepathically communicate with any animal, beast, or <laughs> hybrid creature for ten minutes. <laughs> or hybrid insight. And one a day... And that's where we're going to end. Telepath. The intrigue of Prospero. The ending battle. This wasn't even the boss battle. This was the mini boss. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do Roses and Thorns for the ending session. Mm. Who wants to start? Anyone? Anyone? Brian? Um, I'll start. Go ahead, Brian. I, I will say that a nice rose is that even though I know you were improvising because we had to kind of come on this on, as a fly on the fly because Josh showed up sick or whatever <laughs> didn't, um, show up didn't show up sick it helped me that there was a solid something you were pulling from and that you weren't just uh, making up like eh, I don't know there's a thing over there you go see it and you're like, flip, flip, flip. It's a dinosaur. Um, but to know that you have, that there is like a real world that we were investing in and investigating, that felt nice. It, it was like, this, this is established. We're actually discovering something that you're pulling from, whether it's in your head or on the paper. And it was it, fluid. It added a lot of realism to it which was interesting sweet yeah so big fan of that thorn aside from having to improvise like relearn a character basically on the fly um, that's always nice that, that 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 was a pain um and with Knowing that, like, knowing there was a time crunch, um, at least self-imposed, trying to make this a one-shot. Yeah, um, not quite one-shot. Not quite one-shot. Like, there was <laughs> stuff that I would have done 
had you just said, we're going to play this, I would have definitely not just rushed through like a bunch of stuff. The persistent campaign idea versus the one shot is Mm -hmm. we don't have to skip so much. Yeah. We don't have to fast forward. Yeah. This was like, well, we better just get going if I'm going to see the three things that you're hoping to get to. If you want to hit something. Yeah. We got to get you out of the bathhouse. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, no. 20, 30 minute scene where I go to the kitchens and prepare myself a glorious, glorious salad. <laughs> Beat Insane, thank you for your Twitch Prime subscription. Oh, oh, holy shit. Welcome to the Breakfast Club. Thank you. We're here every Sunday morning, 7 30. Thank you for your follow as well. Thank you, Gob Watery and Brad Test Pattern for your follow as well. Thank you, Mix Sweet. Thank you, all of you. Welcome. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, So I'll say my... uh, I'll say there are kind of two thorns. Uh, One was outside of game, one was more inside. Kind of like you were saying, uh, the pacing, it it was hard to get the pacing for a one-shot because there's a lot of content. Uh, It was a very full-of-content one-shot, I have to say. Uh, it would have been nicer to pace it, but uh, slower to get all the content. But then, like you were saying, it's paced for a one shot, so we we're trying to skip through everything. Uh, the thorn I would say for in game is I I hate not being able to save everything. So in the game, I know oh, there's a lot of people upstairs that are probably attuned to these masks that might tr- be transforming. And, yeah, I'm just trying to save everyone. What a hero, good but. player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are not yet fully formed. <laughs> <laughs> but We uh, haven't um, corrupted tainted you. you too much yet? <laughs> no, we tainted him, but we haven't corrupted him. Okay, we haven't corrupted uh, you too much. I'll say my <laughs> rose, though, is actually having... Uh, it seemed like it was very well flushed out for uh, being a one-shot. It was nice to have... Something that we were supposed to be investigating and also came in not knowing much about it. Goals. So we, yeah. It was nice going in with the goals and actually getting to the goals and semi-completing it. So Yeah. I mean, mostly completing. Mm-hmm. There's a little more to go. And actually, I'll go next, so I got a couple. <laughs> I think one of my roses is about the one-shots. This is a very well-put-together one-shot. Lots What's of stuff again? going on. This is called A Night of Masks and Monsters. A Night of Masks and Monsters. On DM's Guild, you found it? On DM's Guild. They have a big plug for us. Well, I'll plug it on the YouTube re- replay. It was pretty well put together, and it was one of the popular ones, like 9,000, 10,000 downloads, so other people have played it. Um, as far as the game... This is definitely a good lead-in for political intrigue. There's a little stuff going on in the background. There's people hiding secrets that you're like, I want to know the answer, and you did. You wanted to know what she was hiding, and she said she would talk to you later. That was Kara. And she didn't tell you. That's kind of a cool part of the story where if you go back, it's something you can pull on later. Um, More material, I like that. But I think my favorite part was when you convinced the uh, succubus not to kill you and that you're the devil <laughs> that she summoned somehow. <laughs> Before she finished the circle. Before she finished the circle. It was very improv. I gave you disadvantage because she knew what she was summoning and you were not it. Mm-hmm. But you still succeeded in convincing her that just something different happened when she tried it. Mm-hmm. I liked that. It was an interesting turn to the whole game. Where you didn't have to, like, solo fight her. And you might have just been charmed by her instead. Although you have a good chance to fight against it, she was going to charm you. Mm. That was, like, the first thing she was going to do. It didn't happen. Mm. Yeah. So it changed the whole dynamic of the rest of the session because you would have been going in charmed against your friends. The two dummies. <laughs> yeah, who would not know? So. <sighs> uh, that's my roses. Thorn... I don't think I really had a thorn. I had fun all around. I 
think it was good the whole way through. I don't even care if we have to rush it. It's the one shot. Whatever. Rush through. Go through the bath scene. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Describe in detail the romp. That was hilarious. <laughs> go ahead, man. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go on board with everybody else. Like it was, it was definitely the time crunch. Um, uh, I would have liked to see every like this is definitely <laughs> not how we play, right? Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to see a lot more of this because this was really interesting. Right, really interesting. So if this is how we're gonna be kind of be playing the role campaign, if that's what we're doing, I'm really interested in that. Um, so this was, but yeah, I wanted to see a lot more. Um, kind of sad that we kind of, well, we'll pick it up. Maybe we'll pick it up next time and we'll lead into our whatever, you know. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah, um, so that was my thorn. And my rose, because I really thought this was really well put together. And as a bonus thorn, though, having to make the character right away, and mm -hmm. yeah, like it's it's everything everybody said already. It was a good day. It was fun. Go Vikes! Oh, is it that time? Oh yeah. All yeah, right. Eleven fifty nine. I would not say thank you for that guy's follow. I just got rid of him. What's that? <laughs> it's just got a dumb name. Hmm? Don't need weird people like that in the chat. Hmm. <laughs> you don't like names? Well, not <laughs> weird names. Certain ones. Got oh. rid of them. Huh. But, <laughs> thank you everyone else for your follow. Um, we'll see you next week. Hopefully Josh will be back. We'll continue on with our campaign. Any other shout outs anyone's got? Uh, big thanks to Pro... Protsky for saving my life. The inspiration. The inspiration he bought. Oh, Pol Pols Polsky. Pols Polsky? Polk. It used to be Polky. Polk. To the horse of Gumby. I thought there was like a T in there, making it complicated for me to say. Yeah. Polk, Polk T. Uh, we do not have a Discord yet. Maybe ever. Mostly because we all have full time jobs and little time to spend on. It takes a lot of effort to put this together, and I'm pretty much doing it by myself. Matt helps sometimes. I uh, used to. Used to. So yeah, Life happens. Now we just play. And Brian's got daughters. Josh has daughters. They got stuff going There's on. There's quite a so. bit of Discord while we play, but... Polk tea. <laughs> Polk tea. Okay. Polk, Polk tea. Thank you all. Thank See you. See you next week. Awesome. Have Discord. a great day.